Welcome to the podcast, Eye for Talent, the show where we've got an eye for talent. I'm your host, Dylan, aka DJ Serial Sauce. I'm a YouTube content creator, kind of Twitch streamer, producer, podcast host, and a whole slew of other things. Uh, and uh, we're back, baby. It's uh, it's technically, not so technically, going to be the beginning of 2024. It, It's not by the time this is recorded, but it will be by the time you hear it. I've been gone for a few months, but we're back and we're better than ever. Um, joining me is West Axel, aka the guy who plays Ultra Kill sometimes. Uh, and by sometimes, I mean he is an avid speedrunner of the game, as well as the game Reaver, which is a relatively similar game. We'll get into it. Um, and also had to clarify in post-production that he is a general Doom enjoyer, which I respect. Uh, and then lastly, he's also a verifier on the Ultra Kill section of speedrun.com. So, um, uh, West Axe, let me ask you, how, how did you manage to acquire all of these things while only being a a, a, a semi-avid uh, avid enjoyer of the game? You know, just a casual player. It's a casual player. <laughs> <laughs> well, the verifier thing was actually very recently. You know, I think it's in the past couple, the like, past week or so. The past. So I can week. go. I, 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 something like that. I met, I messaged BGB about my interest in being a, uh, um, a verifier, and BGB added me on the thirteenth. So it's actually been ten days as of today, <laughs> oh, uh, which is the twenty third now that I've been a verifier. <laughs> my goodness. So okay. not very long. Yeah, that's, I, that's 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 a new development. Yeah, the crazy thing about it is, is I always feel like I had seen your name on the speedrun.com website, but maybe it was because like I would go there to look at other people's runs and try and submit my own and I would see your name in the runs and I would see your name <laughs> in the Twitch chat of a, of a buddy of mine. And so oh, I just yeah. assumed that you were always a verifier or like a moderator or something. So yeah, I guess yeah. I'm, I'm a I'm I don't, a I've, I've been a very active uh, person, you know what I mean? Um, so uh, and, and you're probably talking about Kirby. I'm in Kirby's chat every so often. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't actually know how you know Kirby, to be honest. I just saw, I think I saw, I actually, when you first like reached out to me or whatever, I think I looked at your link tree and I saw Kirby there. I was like, oh, <laughs> that's like, probably wait, how you fuck? know me. <laughs> yeah, because I imagine Cause it was I'm, one of those things where you, you, you would like be in their chat and then you would hear my voice, but you wouldn't know that it's tied to me. Yeah, I guess I didn't know it was tied to you. Actually, now I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, we'll get into the ultra kill stuff in just a second. Um, so the, the the actually the way that I know Kirby is actually very bizarre. So, um, me and them share a joint appreciation for uh, a specific Minecraft content creator who used to be very popular back in the day. Um, and then the YouTube algorithm stopped favoring him because YouTube algorithm is changing all the time. And so he actually made a pivot over to Twitch streaming and specifically switching to Sea of Thieves streaming. Uh, and just on a dime, me and Kirby also happened to be subscribed to his Patreon, which allowed you to play on a Minecraft server that he had. Uh, and so we both would be playing on the Minecraft server and we were kind of more active than a lot of the other members who were supporters and who were on the server. Uh, and then one day they were like, I think they were like, end busting or whatever like they were just going and trying to get like elytra or whatever and uh and both of us happened to be streaming and we didn't realize <laughs> until <laughs> until we got into a call and then realized we were both streaming and it was it was interesting and then through future developments also realized that we also live in relative close proximity to each other which is very bizarre uh oh wow yeah I, yeah it's <laughs> i'm not gonna be one of those you, but, people a bizarre set of circumstances led to a, a new friend basically you know yeah, what i exactly. mean yeah uh that's pretty cool yeah i'm not gonna be one of those people that's like look at how small the world is i think it's it's just you know proximity it's, uh, yeah, 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 yeah yeah so it's like you know yeah it's like sometimes i don't know it's like sometimes you're like damn the world feels small or whatever but then other times i'm like oh the world is humongous and you <laughs> end up coming back to the real realization is that the world is actually just about as big as i think it is sometime <laughs> yeah yeah it's like a yeah the world is like very average sized but you 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 tend to like um you tend to over represent the amount of times that would or the amount of situations that would lead you to saying look at how small the world is and over representing how much you would say look at our world how large the world is um, yeah and so yeah then it all averages out to like well yeah the, the this was to be expected <laughs> yeah this was to be expected yeah but i don't know i wonder how many people come to that like thought process but anyway uh you know <laughs> yeah but yeah it's cool to see that you know kirby kirby seems very entertaining yeah Kirby's so. cool as hell. Uh, 
doing a lot of doing a lot of cool shit right now. Got a lot of big plans coming up. Um, so we'll we'll it's going to tangentially come up. I just know it. But uh, the we probably should jump into some. We're going to jump into some Ultra Kill stuff. We're going to move over to a little bit of Doom and Reaver. We're going to go back to Ultra Kill because uh, you know it's pretty obvious that that's kind of where you primarily lie. So um, I, I, right before this, I, I made a point that like. The amount of time that one spends in a video game doesn't matter a lot to some people. If you're playing a very large game like World of Warcraft, it's like, I have X thousand of hours or whatever. The only time that I've ever made a big deal of how many hours I've played in Ultra Kill is because I made a video talking about the music of it. And uh, and I was like, I have 75 hours in this game. And then I had like 105 by the time I finished the video. And now I have 150. And still, I'm like, I can't even begin to fathom how much time people have in the game outside of like devs who have to constantly be in the game to fix stuff so i want to know how many hours you have on this game <laughs> i have 2600 hours as of uh now tooth it might on. be a little bad <laughs> <laughs> oh no <laughs> okay well when you know you as we're talking i'm actually practicing like a boss kill yeah. while we're having this little conversation <laughs> Yeah, uh, how long, like, so, how, like, how long have you been playing the game? Like, what uh, uh, time frame did you start playing? So, when I started playing, it was not very deep. Like, I played for maybe 20 hours. It was a, um, one of my IRL friends was seeing somebody at the time. Um, uh, I think you might have seen her in some of my streams, I think, when you were in my stream the other day. Uh, her name's Tessa. She was seeing someone at the time. And they were the one that bought me the game. Oh, that's nice. And uh, <laughs> I played, and at the time, I think it was up to 3-2 is what the game was at the time. Oh, and I just goodness. played all the way up to 3-2. And I just checked out some stuff, and that was pretty much it. I had like 20 hours in the game, and yeah. And I didn't actually come back to Ultra Kill until about uh, a bit before Wrath and Heresy came out. I saw uh, the Dark Nova video. Dark Nova, which, he, which is act he's actually one of my buddies now. <laughs> but he made like the the big video on um like the P dash one like speed running history. Oh yeah. And uh and I saw that video and I was like, I kind of want to do that. <laughs> and so I actually came back to Ultra Kill around that time and I um started like, you know, working my way up to unlock P one. I started trying my hand out at P one. And then soon after I uh um soon after I started practicing P one, Wrath and Heresy came out. So I also got to practice like six two and stuff. I think six two and P one were like my first ever submitted runs, actually. So that it's it's around that time, like right before Heresy, or Wrath and Heresy came out. I that's when I started dumping like my hours into the game. <laughs> Fair enough, yeah. You know, because I wanted to get good. I had the urge, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's that, okay. So it, I. I'm trying. I'm trying to think of like that timeline because what? Because Wrath and Heresy came out in like middle of 2022. I want to say. Yeah. Because it was. It was like, like uh, between then and then. Some around then because I, okay, so I got the P1 P percent record. Uh, I use this as like a sort of time frame for around then. It was October of 2022, and I got that P1 record, which is what I'm most known for. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> October of 22. So. But. Uh, I don't remember exactly. I guess I can go look at the announcements channel. Uh, let me see. <laughs> Wrath. Let me look. At, let me go to announcements. Let's see. I guess we can figure out. I'll figure out just a second. Wrath Heresy. This was uh. This was. What month is eight? August. Yeah, it's August. Yeah, August of twenty twenty two is when. Wrath of Heresy came out. So that would have been a, like right before then is when I would have like came back to Ultra Kill after taking like a large break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. That's still, my goodness. It's insane to think that it's still 2,600 hours in a year. Well, eh, like uh, uh, like 14 months. Or wait, no, I can't. Almost a year and a half, I guess. <clears throat> yeah, it's about that. Yeah, I'm just... <laughs> Because when, whenever I, I talk with somebody about, like, the amount of time they've played a game, I always have to reference it back to, like, the games that I have the most amount of playtime on, which there's, it's, like, two. It's, like, I, I've played Smite for almost 1,900 hours, but that's spanning across, like, two and a half years, probably. And then, 
Uh, I don't even know how many hours I have on Overwatch because I've both played <clears throat> both played on console and on PC, and it hasn't really tracked everything the same way. Uh, but either way, it's still like potentially comparable amount of hours, but over a significantly long long time span. Like if I have twenty six hundred hours on Overwatch, or even maybe three thousand, that's also over the course of seven years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, and so it, it's like tough to kind of fathom that, but I guess, you know, when you, you don't, you don't have multiple world records in P ranking on some of the most infamous levels in the game by having less than like a thousand hours in the game, you know, <laughs> when you could, um, that's, there are people who have done that before. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. It's certainly possible, but especially to, uh, to have it be like a consistent thing. It's like, you know, looking in your streams, looking at the fact that you're practicing a boss fight in the middle of a recording. Uh, <laughs> it's like, it's like, yeah, the proof is in the pudding. So, oh my goodness. All right. <laughs> I'm probably going to bring this up to Kirby later and they're going to be like, yeah, okay. 2,600 hours. And you're like, that was expected. <laughs> I'm like, maybe I just don't grasp time the same way as everyone else. <laughs> but when you in enjoying the game has made it feel like less time than it actually is I mean, i get lost in the the endless grind you know what i mean yeah fair, yeah ex yeah exactly. the grind you get you get locked in you know what i mean and then time just like disappears you know yeah exactly it's that's especially happened. when you're really passionate about some of these levels oh yeah exactly yeah which will i mean we'll <clears throat> we'll get into uh into how passionately you feel about some of those levels in a little bit um so you you kind of you briefly explained your story of how you actually got into Ultra Kill in the first place, but I'm 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 interested in did did the Ultra Kill slash I just bumped my desk fuck did the Ultra Kill or movement arena shooter genre come to you first or did the want to try and complete a game as fast as possible come first? The enjoyment of the the shooter was definitely it. Um, for a while, I've always been like uh, I've always liked shooters, right? But it was around the time when I found Doom, but I sort of like this. This is what I. This is what I want to play. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I found games like it was. I I I didn't quite know it, but it was like there was games like Titanfall and games like Doom 2016 and stuff, and then that sort of itched, that that scratched an itch for me. You know what I mean? But it wasn't until Doom Eternal, and when I was like, this is really what I want. You know what I mean? Stuff like this. You know, I had found like my my true calling. I had an idea. You know what I mean? I was like, you know, I love these types of games, but Doom Eternal really like like was the one that like I was hyped for. That was the game that I started playing, and it was like this is what has been missing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, because I am I, I imagine like depending on when you when you you came into uh, uh, playing Doom twenty sixteen, it was probably like all right, this game is kind of out of the limelight at this point. Like it, it came and went. And so then you were like, all right, well, this game kicks major ass. Uh, what comes next from the same franchise? And then it was, yeah. like, it was like Doom Eternal gets announced and you were like, holy shit. Mark this on the calendar. When this comes out, I, I will be, you will not see me. So I, I'm guessing it, it, it's primarily like um, an obsession with, with um, like heavily or heavy mobility based games in the first place that scratch an itch. Oh yeah. Find, only to then find one that like a uh, that really hit different compared to the rest for you to be like, "All right, I'm locked in." <laughs> oh yeah. It just I uh, like, you know, Doom Doom has meant so much to me. Like it, you can even I, I like I branded myself after like Doom Guy yeah. as well. Like you can see my picture, you know what I mean? It's cool like uh my Doom Guy is or my my profile picture is the Doom Guy uh with my colors holding a uh ultra kill shotgun, you know what I mean? I've always had like that um I guess in the more recent years, I've had like that sort of like, what's it like the 3D anaglyph uh, like color palette. It's like the red, the light blue. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, the the yeah the red and blue overlapping each other. Yeah 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 yeah. And I can send I can send an image real quick, but like this sort of, this sort of like, uh, this sort of like effect is like what I base my colors on. You know what I mean? Like my color scheme. Yeah. I like that. It's really cool. Yeah, it looks really nice. Yeah, I don't know. I just I liked the I liked how the colors looked a lot. 
Yeah, and I think it's probably a, it's also probably a more innovative way to to um, aesthetically kind of style the Doom guy in general. Because most of the time, it's oh, like yeah. he's like hyper realistic, super gritty looking, um, kind of like a Warhammer 40k Imperium space yeah. screen kind of look. And you're like, all right, well, what if red and blue? And then as of recent, you were like, what if I gave him a Christmas hat? <laughs> oh yeah, I added that recently. Yeah. <clears throat> Think of that picture. I want to. I want to give a little bit of shout out to the guy who drew it. Um, his name is Luridus. He's my. He was my profile picture artist at. Uh, I think it's at Luridus underscore on Twitter. But that guy is like really talented. Um, he's. Um, he's also made some art for the uh, Ultra Saturday events. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen Ultra Saturday, but the speedrun community does like a uh, every Saturday, like in the Ultra Kill Discord server, there will be like an event where we join. And one of the people there, usually Kathis, will like just host Ultra Saturday, basically to be a random set of categories. A bunch of people will get in there and then we'll compete. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, Luridus also had done some art like for like uh, like the waiting screen and stuff on the Ultra Saturday Twitch account. Oh, yeah, like their graphics. And the logo. Yeah, yeah. But Luridus is really cool. Hell yeah, dude. Uh, honestly, uh, <clears throat> there's going to be a portion where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you plug away at everything and I'm going to uh re- kindly request that you send over all these uh, all these links so that i can check them out because i'm i'm very interested i'm not like a huge art person per se but i'm always like yeah you know anybody who is a friend of a friend of a show is a friend of me <laughs> and i'm like i'm gonna go in and see what what you what you're cooking up there so that's really cool um so then i'm trying to picture this timeline in my head so it's like we played doom 2016 we played titanfall banger games and you're like doom eternal comes out and you're like fuck yeah this is cool as hell and then, and then Ultra Kill comes out, and it's like, all right, this is neat. This is kind of cool. Well, Clearly it's like the game's unfinished, um, but it's still here. Sometimes, it's, sometimes it's a little hard for me to like, uh, like keep track of certain events in like a timeline. Yeah. So maybe some of those things weren't in like the uh, might not be in the exact order, but um, you know, it was like I said, it was those movement games that even when I was younger, I think uh, like uh, I remember when when uh. I think I played games like I remember playing. I remember trying out Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, and I remember <laughs> really liking it, even though most people hated it at the time. But I didn't know that it would later scratch an itch for when I tried stuff like that that would have similar movements of like Titanfall and stuff. Because I actually, uh, I think, for example, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare was like a direct like um, it, it was supposed to be like a competitor to Titanfall at the time or something. But um, at the time, I was I didn't really I wasn't I didn't even know of like Titanfall's existence. Right, yeah, and that's that's all due to like a really convoluted and fucked up timing in which they released the game, where they released it around the time yeah. of a Call of Duty game. So, despite the fact that it didn't get very much public traction, it's interesting to see that that um, Infinity Ward was still like, yeah, we need to make a game like this. I'm sure it's more complicated than that, but either way, yeah. Plus, damn, hold on, wait, I'm looking. Call of Duty Advanced Warfare was 2014. Oh no. <laughs> As of, as of when people are watching this video, that would be 10 years ago at this point. Oh, that's, I would have been like 11 years old. That's so when fucked they up. Why did you say that? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> on, 10 man. years ago. It would probably be closer to 9 because it came out in late 2014, but either way, it's yeah, nine, nine years ago. It's 9. Yeah. Oh. In November of next year, it'll be a decade since yeah. that came out. <laughs> Oh god, that's, that's fucked up. Yeah, that's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those, I'm always like, Make I'm always feel old. I'm, always, I'm I'm slowly coming more into grips of like realizing I'm not like I'm not that old. I'm only 22, but I come to grips with with like quote unquote how old I am when I start talking with people who are younger than me and they talk to me about what they were doing when certain games came out, and I was like, I'm like Black Ops 2. I was in junior high when that game came oh, yeah. out <laughs> for crying out loud, or when I was playing that game, I should say. Um, and a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, either way. Um, so okay. W- what about Ultra Kill specifically makes you want to speed run it more than other games? And like, if you love Doom so much, what's stopping you from speed running <clears throat> that game? So I don't really. Okay, so when I first played Ultra Kill, I enjoyed it. I told you, like a friend, like a friend at the time, bought it for me, and I was like, uh. Um, you know, it was like it did at the time it was great, but it didn't like I didn't really there was nothing going through my mind that like I never thought that I would speedrun it. 
Like, there was no way I could have predicted that this would happen. Right, yeah, especially because um, by the time you played the game, it was, like, still very bare bones where you, I mean... It I was when I... Time to play it. Yeah, like I said, it was when I saw the Dark Nova video. I saw the P1 runs, and I don't know what quite it was, but it just, it stuck out to me, you know what I mean? I just, I, I think I saw video Dark Nova talk about how this, like, you know... How, about how the how this prime sanctum was a thing, and it was like this ridiculous level that so many little so little people have actually been able to like beat or whatever. And I was like, damn, that sounds actually really sick. I want to try my hand at that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then the addiction to just lowering the time more and more. The thing about Ultra Kill, hold up, I, this actually goes directly into what you asked about why I haven't chosen like speedrun Doom, for example, is that Ultra Kill is extremely accessible. It's actually like number one on speedrun.com most of the time. Oh, damn. For like. Nice. Yeah, and um, so uh, when it comes to Doom Eternal or Doom, when I've seen, you usually get to get like you have to know how to install like an auto splitter and other stuff, which I, I and I know more about now. But at the time, I was like, I, I had no clue what what all that crap meant. You know what I mean? Yeah. And Ultra Kill, all I had to do was start OBS and press Tab a couple of times to pull up a menu. Yeah. And that's all you needed to submit the run. You know what I mean? Yeah, the all the, the stuff there is already yeah did the hard work for me. And so I was like, you know what? I can start competing since it's so easily accessible you know what i mean and uh and it just went from there that's where the that's 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 where the pipeline started <laughs> also did you did you just send me a friend request are you on on steam no that was not me i don't even have my steam that was open. not uh, someone just sent me a steam friend request and their name is balls oh no that is definitely <laughs> not me nope <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who Balls is. Hey, yo, shout, Balls, if you hear this, shout out. Shout out to Balls. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, no, I didn't think I know who this is. This is Balls guy, I think. Okay. You just have a guy named Balls guy that you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to judge. I forgot that Balls guy. I, I, it, that... <laughs> I know a dude named Balls Jeff, guy. So... Actu Balls guy actually uh, took my 2-4 any percent world record recently. What also, a another um respectfully. another uh <laughs> another <laughs> runner. Oh, uh, it's funny. <laughs> oh goodness, what, where was I? I got I got distracted. Where was I going? Oh yeah, the the thing that I really appreciate about Ultra Kill is the fact that like I don't know, it's just it's just like uh, the game doesn't okay. The game still requires a lot of technical knowledge and understanding what's do what you're doing. But I feel like it requires less, like, game-breaking te uh, technical skill to understand. A lot of speedrunning games are, like, clip through this wall and then, like, do a bunch of bullshit. And, like, I know that there are definitely speedruns that in Ultra Kill that utilize that a lot, where it's, like, you know, hit this wall at a certain angle through and you're wall. in the map. Yeah, and, like, watching... I was. Uh, I think when I bugged you about coming on here, you were doing a 3-2 speedrun um, or something. Or no, I think you were. Do I don't remember. It doesn't matter either way. I was. I remember. I was watching practicing three two. Yeah. Yeah, I was watching you do a three two speed run, and I was like, oh, there he goes into the map again. <laughs> and so, and like, yeah, there's like a little, there's like a door, one of those like flesh doors where you can like just spam slide a bunch of times, and you'll like fall through the bottom. Yeah. And, and then just... you'll be in this big open area where you can just like blow yourself up all the way to the checkpoint. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the game definitely has stuff like that, and like if you're really trying to get go hard and like getting like world records and stuff, you still have to understand that. But in terms of accessibility for the game, yeah, it's really easy that you're like, okay, because speedruns are calculated based on in-game time, all I have to do is just press tab twice, and then everybody can see exactly what I did, and then it's all, you know, we're all set and, and good. And so, yeah, um, there, there's like a whole, there's a whole big thing that I talk about with people when I'm talking about why I think, you know, why Ultra Kill is such a, like a cool game, which is that I feel like it does a really... Uh, if, if you if you want to learn how to play the game, not like semi optimally, not really correctly, because there's no correct way to play the game. But uh, if you want to play the game semi optimally and you're like, you know, gunning to understand that kind of thing, the game is like pretty good at helping you understand how to get better at things uh, and like watching certain the, watching different ways that people play the game. Literally just how they run a level differently from you helps teach you a lot of miscellaneous mechanics that while they might not help you in trying to say do faster in that level are still good pieces of information to know. Um, like uh, I was watching, I think it was like the world's first no hit P2 run that helped me understand like a proper or a better way, more efficient way to try and run through that gauntlet or whatever. 
and understanding like uh just miscellaneous texts and damage breakpoints and whatever and then like um herb messiah came out with a video on on rocket tech and i was like what the fuck i didn't know the rocket tech could do all this cool shit and it, i like learned so much about it and so yeah, I think the game is like really accessible and uh, does a really good job at helping you ramp up appropriately to doing really cool shit and playing the game really fast. <laughs> uh, and I really appreciate that. But now we get into the other two games that were mentioned at the top, which is um, what do you enjoy, enjoy specifically about like Doom, be it Doom Eternal, Doom 2016, any Doom game? And like, what do you think makes it different from other arena shooters or just other shooters that you play? that like stick out and make it really special to you uh so so i uh, like i uh, pretty much like my main two games have been ultra kill and doom eternal and uh the thing i like how they're like sort of distinguished from one another yeah, but at the same time i also like how they're very similar you know both, both very fast paced like like you're like a you're like a like a fucking i don't know like a like I think I saw like on a Max Art video. He's like, "You're like a fucking spider monkey on crack or something when you're in Doom Eternal." <laughs> like, uh, I think that's how he described it. And um, it's, it's, it's like the same thing for Ultra Kill too. But they got very distinct mechanics. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, and uh, I I love the um like uh the the what's it called? The, how do I describe it? The dance of the combat in Doom Eternal is like really oh, fun. Yeah. And I. And how you know, and le learning how, like all of the uh, specific ways or the most optimal ways to kill a specific enemy. Like for example, in Doom Eternal, uh, there's like the Hell Knights. Oh, I know that one lock-on rocket burst will just kill a Hell Knight instantly. You know what I mean? And it's little little things like that. They sort of add up, and you sort of remember all. You can do all these combos, and you remember exactly what kills what the best and whatever. And it just makes this really nice like flow state when you're playing in this midst of combat. I can straight up just sit there for like hours just killing demons and like whatever level you know what i mean um yeah and especially because of how many like <laughs> especially because of how many weapons are in the game it's like all right this weapon is used to target this thing but if i take this weapon and then also use this in like a hot swapping situation then it's like this thing's fucking dead instantly also there's a line of these enemies right here and i can do this to take care of all of them at the same time uh and so like a part in a weird way a part of the satisfying part of like playing games like that is like the game is like here's an entire room of enemies and that's their way of presenting a puzzle to you. They're like, all right, find the fastest way to kill all of these things while not wasting all of your ammo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've only seen a little uh, of a Doom gameplay, but Kirby keeps telling me I need to play it, and I was like, God, you're right. Yeah, you should. It's, it's really uh, you, I think you'll enjoy it. Um, there are people who, like, I don't know, Doom Eternal has definitely had some, like, scrutiny about it you know what i mean but for the most part most people think it's absolutely fantastic um um there's a couple of enemies though that people are always bitching about you know what i mean yeah so i wonder how you what you'll think about them <laughs> this game is ten dollars no spoilers do eternal this game is gets on sale a lot yeah i'm get, i'm buying this right now hitting the purchase yeah button. let's go yeah buy it uh -huh. Yeah, I, you should like stream it or something. <laughs> I'll have to see if my computer's powerful enough for that. Because I know when Kirby tried doing that, she was like, "Guys, my stream is dying. Please help." <laughs> Doom Eternal is pretty, uh, like, um, it's pretty well optimized. So I think you'd probably be able to play it. I believe it. Um, I'll, I'll trust. It can, it can go from like really relatively lightweight settings to like uh, really heavy. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm gonna. Oh, this is a 90 gigabyte game. It's fine. I've got plenty of time. Either way, um, yeah. I, I've only, again, I've only seen a little bit of Doom Eternal gameplay. The game just looks really satisfying. And also, like, um, you know, probably the most infamous thing about this game is it has a bitchin' soundtrack. But I feel like the only thing that I ever hear people complain about is only because of the fact that I come at it from an ultra kill perspective. And so people are always, like, dogging on the game. Uh, and then there are other people who, when other people dog on the game, they're like, you're making an unfair comparison about these two games in places that don't really matter. But either way, I, th I still think it's safe to say that people probably enjoy this game uh the amount of people who enjoy this game significantly out outweigh the ones that don't and i think this game probably has a yeah. better reception than 2016's doom because i feel like that game got a lot of bullying on it for some reason doom 2016 is really good but it's like doom 2016 is definitely less similar to ultra kill than doom eternal is doom eternal has got all the you know the dashing and all the, all the stuff you know what i mean yeah like uh 
I mean, hell, uh, one of the things I think was funny is um, for a while in the Ultra Kill community, we had people like, uh, we definitely had our weapon wheel phase where people relied a lot on weapon wheel for a lot of runs and stuff. And uh, for a while in Doom Eternal, I don't know if it, it got patched, but there was, or I don't know exactly how it works or how the boards work, but for a while, there was also a weapon wheel issue that the speedrun community had in Doom Eternal as well, because there's a weapon wheel in that game as well. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, people, people in Ultra Kill were like, oh, weapon wheel or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but in, I know the Doom Eternal, uh, one of the things I saw, basically people would bind like, uh, like their jump button to like throw it or something. And then they would hold weapon wheel while they were falling on a ledge and you would just, it would fly you like it would send you flying across the map. People would just do that to skip it like entire levels. What the heck? <laughs> That's weird. Yeah. Huh. I think there's like a. This isn't even remotely the same game, but there's a, a glitch that kind of exists similar to that in uh, in the Insomniac Spider-Man games, where if you pull out like your your web gadgets wheel as you're like running around the corner of a building, you'll just get like sent across the map instantly, like across all of you know of the yeah. of New York. So I don't know. There must be some weird instability with how code handles slowdowns for switching weapons when you hit like corners or something, but. Either way, yeah. Putting it on the record, Doom stream may be coming soon. Doom in the library. We're doing yeah. it. Yeah. So that's cool. You you have single handedly been passionate enough to make sure about Doom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and but then, yeah, it. Yeah. Doom is where it all started for me, and so I hold it dearly to my heart. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. Um, Doom was where like, all right, I found like this guy, this Doom guy, look, look at the dude right here. This is me. Yeah, is that, uh, <laughs> that's me. That's just a picture of me. What do you mean? <laughs> He's like, <laughs> corporate needs you to find the difference between these two pictures. They're the same. They're the same. They're the same. Exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, there's, there's plenty of games that I hold uh, uh, in my heart that have nothing to do with the current modern games that I play. It's like uh, it's like some of the first games that I play. It's like I played Sonic 2 on the Sega Genesis and people are like, Sonic's a bad franchise. I'm like, fuck you. Let me play my funny game from the 90s. So, I totally understand. But the difference here is that less people bully Doom than more than people... Whatever, I'm just bitter. Um, <laughs> so, I, I recently picked up and then also recently found out about the fact that you also do some reverse speedruns. Um, I beat the game in its current state. Um, and I really only have one thing to complain about it, and it doesn't matter. But uh, what 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 about Reaver? Do you think is really special, and what do you particularly enjoy about that game? And make, you know, what do you think makes it different? So to you, it's sort of like so. I I think uh, you see. I'm also I'm also like a verifier or whatever for um, Reaver, but that's more of like a very like strange set of circumstances. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. um, I I I wanted. Uh, I like Reaver. And I don't actually have a whole lot of runs for it. I pretty much only ran clouds. I've done some practice and stuff. I have plans to do like more runs, but I'm still like relatively almost kind of new to like the your speed running scene. I haven't held it a whole lot, but um, I have spent a bit of quite a bit of time in the game. Maybe like uh, I don't know, fifty hours at this point. I should definitely spend more. Um, the but it is really fun. The weapons in Reaver are so cool. It's definitely got some work that it needs to do. These do it due to it, but it it only just like last month came out of the demo. Yeah, exactly. you know I mean, it's finally only just gotten early access, so I'm sure Crunks has a whole lot of work that he wants to do to it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But the one of the things I like about Reaver as well is that it has the same thing, same accessibility. Where um, a lot of people don't really run Reaver at the moment, but it takes a lot of inspiration from Ultra Kill. It even has like a very similar like uh, timer thing. Where um, there's an in-game timer you can enable by pressing tab or whatever button you bind it to, and uh, the speedrun boards actually use that as well, which I find is really nice. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No auto splitter required. You know. <laughs> and I think there needs to be more games need to have more accessible. You know, and people, people, some people will probably go to a speedrun board. See, you have to like. Um, like install some additional files and then some people might just be turned off by that like immediately you know what i mean yeah because that's and then, kind of annoying <laughs> yeah and like uh you know it's it probably wouldn't be too hard to set up most like auto splitters but at the same time um like uh, that that's like one person who could have uh who might have you know developed a new hobby if 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 uh, if only they had find found the uh, 
found it like you know a bit more accessible or something you know what i mean yeah exactly it's like if you want your speedrun community to grow you really should try and make the the tools required to speedrun the game as um yeah. as easy to understand as possible and if at all possible try and base your speedruns times off of something that is displayed in game that can be found yeah i'm also um friends with the guy who I, I've mentioned, I probably mentioned Crunks, but he's the guy who made it. I'm friends with Crunks, and he's the, the dev of Reaver. And uh, it's sort of a weird way how I met him. He's actually, uh, I don't know if you know Simba. Have you ever heard of Simba Tryhard? Yes. Uh, but but she's like a, uh, like a fucking just a content creator, speedrunner of like stuff like Boomer Shooter, basically. Yeah. Ultra Kill, Reaver, this, that, whatever. And, uh, Crunk was actually playing Minecraft with Simba in Simba's Discord. I just happened <laughs> to join them. No way. <laughs> I know that sounds bizarre. And that's what I told Crunk. I was like, hey, I've been playing Reaver, you know. And me and Crunk's actually got along very well. You know? Nice. I like that. And so that's like a weird story of how I met Crunk. I didn't, I didn't expect to click so well with Crunk. You know what I mean? He sends me like, like, uh, just some awful shit. Well, it'd be really funny if you could like <laughs> put some of this stuff on the <laughs> Yeah, dude, if I was to make this like a video podcast, I'd just be like here are the, yeah, just the right. absolutely batshit insane memes that have been received by Krunks. Oh, uh, wait, no, just the stuff, stuff, stuff that he says. Like it. Oh, Da <laughs> Krunks, Da Eust, Da West, the fast one, fastest hand in the Wild West, fattest ass, picture of a cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh he's a really really silly guy you know what i mean oh that's funny yeah, dude, i he, think he's, funny, <laughs> he's a cat profile picture he's too silly yeah exactly that means he's also good at video games yeah he has a cat profile picture yeah he's insane that's cool yeah i think that's actually one of the things that's uh kind of making reaver um slowly come to the obviously it's slowly coming to the coming to the limelight because it's like it just got out of its demo but it's also because like um content creators who exist in a uh content creators who exist in the ultra kill space are like really hyping the game up right now at least the ones that have seen it uh and like the the devs and the people who like run their twitter account are like you know like homies with with these people and so it, it, yeah it, it, reaver it like i've seen stuff like game. reaver fucks on twitter yeah <laughs> and stuff like that people posting whatever because they're right it does <laughs> Definitely got some more work that needs to do to it, you know. Yeah, but again, but only in, it's like the way I told Crunk that like uh, like Reaver is in a nicer state coming out of coming into early access, and I think Ultra Kill was when it came into early access. So you know, it's like uh, I can only oh, I'm so excited. One day when when Reaver is finally fully released, I can only imagine how glorious that game is gonna be when it's all polished up. It's had you know multiple more years of work. It's gonna be ah. Uh, I'm excited, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's also just going to be um, exciting to see how the game like uh, breaks itself off. Because the, obviously there's a lot of people who are just dogging on it because it, it looks too similar to Ultra Kill in terms of like its game style and like the revolver looking kind of the same. So I'm curious to see like after a few more years how uh, more things are added and changed and potentially removed that give the game a, um, a more defined identity per se. It's got a lot... It, it, it's definitely got its own identity, but it's got a lot of inspiration from Ultra Kill. Yeah. I, remember, I actually had a conversation about it with Crunks. But Crunks actually said that Ultra Kill is like really big, like really important to him, basically. Um, Crunks told me that uh, originally, I saw what a, the original build of, of, of Reaver. Apparently, it was originally supposed to be like a top down shooter of some kind. Oh, what the but heck? Crunks at some point picked up Ultra Kill, and I liked Ultra Kill so much that that's what he wanted to do as like the genre of his game. Like, uh, he now wanted to be, like, a movement shooter, basically. Yeah. You know? And that's cool. So, it's got a... He was very... The, the, that Ultra Kill had a big impact on him. And so, he immediately knew what he wanted to do. You know? Yeah. Something like Ultra Kill or something in that same sort of vein. You know what I mean? Yeah, and also, yeah, I think that's pretty, I think that's pretty cool. And, it's also and I think like that's a, totally sick. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's nice to see. Because, like, um, it's one of those things where, like... <clears throat> this this was kind of a weird thing that I was trying to explain once where um, when Ultra Kill first came out and started becoming part of the public eye, a lot of people would describe it as like, um, you know, Doom on a budget. And so now people look at Reaver and they consider it like... 
Ultric, they say Ultra Kill on a budget. It's like the same reason why that was like, ugh. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, so uh, yeah, it, yeah it, 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 on one hand, it leaves a little bit of a bad taste in people's mouths because it's like, wow, you're just copying this game that's becoming wildly successful. On the other hand, it's like, if they have intention on, um, if they have like a, a plan on how they're going to make this game feel different enough from Ultra Kill, which they've already, they're already on, a, on the right track, um, then it being considered an ultra kill adjacent game is a good way for people to tune in and find the game. Uh, and, and really the only thing that we care about is making sure that the least toxic of the, of the ultra kill community finds the game. The ones who aren't just going to immediately disparage it and call it shit because it looks like, you know, an ultra kill on a budget type game. Um, but yeah, I think I, even it's like, cool that you brought that up with about, uh, like doom. You know what I mean? Because I didn't, I wasn't even thinking about it this way, but people said the same crap about, about Ultra Kill for a while. You know what I mean? Where it was like, oh, I'm sure it'll, like, like, if the people would probably have said, like, oh, like, you know, we'll just wait for it to be a bit more, you know, different than Doom. You know what I mean? Or whatever. Like, um, so yeah, an Ultra Kill at, after, you know, more time is obviously distance itself from Doom even more in, in, in its own unique way. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, th- I honestly think even like just just the visual style change is enough like a uh, visual style change and graphic fidelity is already enough to help keep the yeah. distance from each from it because like it, it it's like sure doom and ultra kill kind of have like similar mechanics but even if you don't immediately dive into the mechanics that make ultra kill different it's like you look at these two games visually and you can tell that like the, you know there's very clearly a very different vibe that's trying to be like incurred per se um but the the best thing that i've seen in a while is the fact that uh hikita himself even gave blessings to people who want to make games that are inspired off of ultra kill it's one of those things where it's like it's like don't be afraid of people calling your game a knockoff of our of our game if uh like especially if you have good intentions on making it have its own defined identity because then that's how you create branching game genres and that's how you like expand the gaming landscape uh, <clears throat> and like just make better products essentially yeah all right uh, krug's even like i think has some sort of contact with akita now because um i don't know they, they think uh reaver allowed him to like i don't know them to bond or something um yeah. but um they've you know a lot of people have like probably i think this i don't actually know but i think people are actually i think paying Akita or something about the existence of reaver it's like, oh, look at his knockoff, or whatever. But I don't know. The, the, uh, Krunks and uh, Re- Akita actually had a chance to like talk about, you know, Reaver. Yeah. So, and I think that Krunk, Kr- like Akita, like is th- basically just said exactly what you said, you know, which is Krunks like the, uh, like you know, nothing wrong with uh, making games like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, he has his blessing. He's like, he's like, get off his dick, people. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah. So even, yeah, even Akita is fine with, you know, Akita himself is fine with reaver existing you know what i mean there's no like uh there's there's no reason for people to be mad you know what i mean yeah, exactly. the games are different they've got their own identities you know even if they are very very similar but like i said p- people say would say people have said the same thing about doom eternal as well you know what i mean Like I don't know, people, people, I've seen people like on like comment sections argue about Doom Eternal and Ultra Kill before. But for me, I'm like, why not both? You know what I mean? Like yeah. the shaking hands emoji. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Just <laughs> that's how I've always been, you know. Yeah, it's always one of those. Yeah, things. it's like I don't, I don't exactly know why. I know why people pit these kinds of games against each other, which is that if one is inspired off of the other, people are immediately going to be like, you know. One of these games has to definitively be better, and it's like, well, no, because they don't really always serve the same like purpose and whatnot. And the point at which I realized that was when I made a video on, um, I made a video on why Ultra Kills Community. I, I think I titled it "Ultra Kills Community Isn't Perfect," and that's okay. Mostly talking about my experience with them and how I think that in general they're doing good things and they're like passionate about the game and they're trying to like make the best of it in the midst of occasionally some slightly non not so great things coming out of it namely backseating because i come at it from like a streamer perspective but oh there, yeah there's a lot of backseating. yeah uh so i've you know that's that's been my main experience with it but the whole thing is like i i, I made a point in the whole video about like um because the game has so few weapons compared to something like doom eternal 
you know, you're going to inadvertently have somebody who finds a mechanic by accident because of how impactful the weapons are. And then they're going to go and try and see if somebody else has used it or, you know, done it. And then they're going to try and expand off of that and whatever. And I had someone come into my comments and being like, I really don't like when people compare the amount of weapons in both of these games because they obviously don't serve the same purpose. Like Doom would not be, Doom Eternal would not be a better game if it had as few weapons as Ultra Kill. And Ultra Kill wouldn't necessarily be better if it had as many weapons as Doom Eternal. It's like people need to take it with some kind of context and understand these kinds of things. So that's why I I always look at certain games that um, are inspired off of one another and I use it as like a, a stepping point of like, if I've played this game before, I'm going to compare them in a way of like, oh, this looks like something I've seen here or this reminds me of this mechanic. But it's never going to be like, I think Reaver is better than Ultra Kill or vice versa because Reaver's not a finished game. Ultra Kill's not a finished game. Reaver has been out uh, in, in production for significantly less time, so comparing the two feels unfair. Um, and I don't know if people have given it enough time, but I fully agree with you that the game is uh, cool as fuck. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Especially Crunk's idea on like okay, so the one of the is some people even think that the the revolver from uh from Reaver is like cooler than the one from Ultra Kill, where it's like you can uh but it's like and people a lot of people think it's up there. It's it's got that like where the, the uh the ricochet chains into enemy heads. Yeah, and that that ability is is so like ridiculous in, in Reaver. It's, it's extremely fun. Like addicting to, to, to use that the the blue revolver or whatever, it's incredible. Yeah, I agree. It's like a yeah, it's just like <laughs> yeah. Th 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 there's there's just a bunch about it. Like it, it's it's satisfying being able to kind of swap weapons without like a cooldown per se, and just kind of like constantly unloading fire into people. And then you're like, hold on, I want to do something cool, so let me use the let me use the go go gadget pixel reducer shotgun ability, the rage. Uh, <laughs> And then like, oh, I'm going oh, to yeah, the go go things. gadget rage ability. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, Reaver's Reaver's cool. And I'm excited to see where it goes uh, in the future. <clears throat> oh, yeah. But um, all right. We probably should actually get into some of the speedrunning stuff because we've rambled a lot. And that's fine. Yeah, um, we rambled a lot. It, it, it just happens, you know? <laughs> yeah, it, you know, and that's fine. It works. I've got um, ADHD brain. <laughs> yeah, we all do. I've got ADHD and. Yeah, my ADHD. It's it's. I don't know. I've I've always been like, I was heavily medicated for so many years. I've had it real bad, but um, you know, Ultra Kill is like helps me hyperfixate on something. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and I respect it. Um. So all right, I I I was looking at some of your most notable speed runs. Most notable to me basically means the ones I referenced when I was talking about speed running in that video. Uh, I was talking about I was talking about Kirby's streams and how they were just streaming, trying to get a speed run, and then eventually were just trying to use uh, to charge back the ferryman on uh, on five two, and then you showed up in chat and just kind of started, um, you know, just shooting the shit with everybody, um, specifically mentioning some of the speed runs like six one or uh, damn it six two four four and P one and P two, which P two has now been avowed and, and updated and whatnot. But I'm 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 Curious if there was anything notable about those levels or any of the levels that you're kind of like uh, doing the best in currently. If there was anything about them specifically or the way that they were ran that made you want to go in there and try those. Or if it's just an enjoyment for the level in general and you're like, I'm going to brute force my way in and make sure that <laughs> I know how to run these levels fast or. So the uh, the reason the thing that, that I guess like if you're asking about like if there's like a. Uh a common ground those levels have. It's because they're boss levels. Um, I started with P1, and so I just sort of like, I was good at P1, so why don't I run other boss levels? You know what I mean? Yeah. I've been trying to branch out more recently. P2 was like a middle ground where it's like, oh, there's a bunch of enemy combat and also a boss. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, it was because I was good at P1 that I decided I should do other boss levels too. You know what I mean? Yeah, that makes sense. Like the the um the speedrun tactics employed to defeat bosses are kind of universal amongst most of them. <laughs> Cuz they all have yeah, like, oh, we, yeah, there's animation and you're like, "All right, here we go." But for specifically the prime sanctums are like that, but not um not every boss is exactly universal. Oh, like yeah, for example, there's a big there's a pretty I think there's a pretty big difference between the like the the boss kills for like 
I don't know, zero five any percent and like uh uh p1 yeah like like and it, it, they, even though they would technically use the same weapons but they're like really get some different stuff yeah exactly but i guess i guess uh like the specifically the bosses on the notable speedruns that i'm mentioning i guess okay three out of four of them have uh a similar enough way to tackle them that it, yeah then it's like all right, now let me figure out the mobility to get to these guys as fast as possible, and then uh, kind of use the use a similar, albeit uh, updated, way to kill these bosses for each one of them. So that that's that's kind of what I was expecting because when I watch you do the boss speed runs, I'm like I'm like there is so much micro like he's doing more micromanaging to make sure he can one shot this boss than I do to play a whole fucking level. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so it. That would have been my natural assumption. Um, but then, like you said, P2 is probably like a decent way to kind of branch out of that a little bit and find other ways to run. Other oh, yeah. Um, P2 having like the hardest enemy like gauntlet in the game sort of um, it was the level I needed to get better at P percent combat. Yeah. You know, I was able to what I learned from P2, I was able to get like really good at like uh, I had, I've done runs on other levels like oh three. And a couple other things. What else have I done? I did one, two runs. Uh, yeah. F- uh, four, two as well. Which, yeah, four, two. I don't know. Four, two is four, two is one of those levels that, like, it took me so long to actually P rank it properly and then to try and at least do it faster than I used to do it to try and beat my friends. Uh, that now I have, like, a, a, like a real soft spot for the level where I'm, like, I'm going to go in uh, and I'm still going to suck. Uh, but... <laughs> I'm going to keep coming back and playing it. Um, but I guess, okay. So w- with, with that in mind, cause I, cause I, I do fully recognize the fact that there are people who are better at horde clearing and like pathing to get to enemies, to spawn them in faster and kill them in faster. And then there are people who are just strictly better at killing bosses. Um, one of between me, Kirby and one of our other friends, historical, uh, he fucking sweeps us in most levels that don't contain a boss in it because he's like, all right, I'm going to get to this level. I'm going to place this trap. Everything's going to be dead and I'm going to move on like instantly. And me and Kirby are like, all right, here's ways that we can get a lot of damage off on a boss and try and kill them faster. Uh, And he tries to fight the bosses and it just doesn't click the same way with him. So I totally get that there are people who, you know, succeed better at single target versus crowd control and killing hordes and whatnot. But like, um, I can absolutely still shred like normal, like combat. But compared to like other notable runners in the community, uh, like normal enemy combat is definitely a, a, like one of my has been my weaknesses compared to some other runners who like specialize in that. Um, yeah, I've specialized in specifically like just killing bosses. I think what was it? Uh, I think it was in in Jidus, one of the other fellow runners. I think uh, they referred to me as the boss level demon. That's that's who I am. <laughs> <laughs> I like. That. I think that's a pretty accurate. Um, pretty accurate description yeah because there's not really many people who like there are people who are good at boss levels but i've i'm i have like like i don't know a top three time and like pretty much every single one of them for at least one of the categories yeah and so i I, yeah it's definitely no surprise that obviously you are still good at at horde clearing because like again 2600 hours like what the fuck were you spending all that time for if you suck at horde clear (laughs) i also just like you know destroying um the the gauntlet in p2 helped me a lot you yeah. know that taught me a lot of stuff yeah it really was pushing you into the deep end to help you figure out how to like how to yeah. deal with shallow water or something <laughs> but it took me a while i remember when 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 p2 came out i was not i i i didn't have the record actually for quite a long time because people like stuan who had much better times than me like right away this one had a whole has a whole lot more um, experience running P percent levels like that actually require combat with like enemy gauntlets and stuff. So yeah. he brought it down to like three minutes something right, relatively quickly. And I had to I had to work for like a couple months to bring to finally get like into that three minute area. And now that I've had all that practice, I'm definitely um, definitely more capable. Yeah, and just like probably significantly better at the game, even like. Oh yeah, and I gotta, I gotta get even better because um, that I have to prepare because I don't. I haven't talked about it. I think I've talked about it 
to some people, but my ultimate goal, I have there is one thing I want to do, and, and for and and I want to have all three world records for all three prime sanctums, so yes, a total no. of nine records, all at the same time. But I have to wait for P three for that. I had all I had six of them all at once. I had all the records for P one and P two at the same time. I don't have P two P percent anymore. I still have five of the six prime sanctum world records though. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was when I was actually when I was going to like view the speedrun stuff so that I could like actually structure out these questions, I looked and I was like, "What? I was like, what the fuck?" I was like, "How did he drop from first to like fifth or sixth or whatever it is on on P percent?" Well, that happened recently. Uh, basically, uh, Georgie and a few others. Um, there's a strat called uh, FUPS. I can explain that in a second. A lot of people do not like. Um, basically, where you can like like you you uh, shoot a rocket, freeze it, and then you whip it at yourself. And it creates like this large explosion. You can also oh, yeah, stack rockets like that. In the air, yeah. But yeah, yeah. And a lot of, and they, there's so many of them routed into P2 now. And it, and it, it made uh, the, these lower times like a whole lot more accessible. And, and I just, um, and I was beaten, and a whole lot of other people have tried their hands at it as well and beat my time as well. And I just haven't been like, I haven't, I haven't quite, uh, bothered to like clap back yet basically yeah to catch up um i've done some attempts i've been more more interested on just like keeping my senses sharp for um because for practicing for ultra charity uh which is in like a week or so yeah on uh, new i don't know if i told you but um i don't, I don't know how, when do you think this video will be out um let me like on the first or something let me look at the exact calendar uh this will probably be it'll be released within the first week i typically like to uh, upload these episodes on a thursday so it'll come out probably the fourth Oh yeah, okay. Then they they'll they'll, they'll have just missed it, but oh. on um on December thirty first, New Year's Eve, there's gonna be a big Ultra Kill charity event with like dev interviews with like people like Akita and stuff, and also like some speed runs. Um, That's cool, isn't and it? I'm actually gonna be competing, running the Prime Sanctum with a fellow runner runner named Asunder, and that's what I've been like making sure I keep my sensor my uh, senses sharp for, because I'm gonna be running P one and P two on live on on the stream. Yeah. I'm putting yeah, this big on my charity calendar. event. That's so cool. Yeah, hold on. I have. I can send you like the picture. I actually announced it in my Discord a while back, like a like a couple weeks ago or something. Um, let's see. Let's look through your announcements really quick and see what I can find. There's a. Uh, Here it oh, is. I'm it's also charity. But that's it right there. On December thirty first, New Year's Eve. It's some um, outright action international uh, charity being raised for um, human rights uh, for LGBT people, basically. Yeah, hell yeah. And, you know, Ultra Kill, I think most people probably are aware, but Ultra Kill is a very, uh, there's a lot of LGBT people in the community. Yeah. And I'm glad it, uh, you know, like, uh, like, um, I'm glad that Ultra Kill has had been a safe space for a lot of people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, there's still the bad eggs, it just like any community, you know what I mean? Yeah, it happens. But um Ultra Kill has maintained such a like a such a safe place for people like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've just, I'm I'm very just proud. put this in my calendar. So I will try my best to pull up to this. It is starting at like eight in the morning. I don't know if I'm gonna be awake this, that early on. A, this stream like, will be going on for like eight hours or something, just so you know. Um, I'm in. I'm in. There's a private server that we have. It's the Ultra Charity Discord. That's owned by Yellow Swear, which is the he's the main guy behind the event. Yeah, and everybody's there. Like all the people that that, that are going to be a part of it are there, pretty much. And um, there's like a lot of stuff on the um on the on the uh, the board to be covered in the in this stream. So you know, as long as you're up. At some point during the day, because this stream will be going on for like probably the half of half of the entire day, basically. Yeah, it'll be going on basically. Give me a long stream. My, it would be going throughout what my like an entire work day for me if I worked on a Sunday. So yeah, if I if I miss that, then God is telling me that I am not allowed to <laughs> to consume this content. But either way, I just followed the yeah. Twitch. I've put this on my calendar. I'm keeping a track on this. I'm probably gonna post about it too because this shit looks cool as hell. Um, but. Either way, yeah. Um, where was I going with this? Oh, yeah. When I, yeah, okay. So I was like, I recognize that some people are just 
objectively better at taking out bosses than hordes and whatnot. So when I was looking at some of the levels that you don't have any submissions for on the speedrun.com website, a lot of them are the ones that are just strictly the gauntlets. And uh, knowing what you just told me, I'm going to assume this isn't necessarily because you're like, I don't want to try and run this, but it's more because of like, I need to um, continue to branch out more until I feel comfortable running these. Yeah, because, because currently I just because currently I just don't do like I'm going to assume you don't have any if you have tried to run these levels you don't I've have submitted any, like, to I've um I've I've have more I have less submissions or how, 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 how do I word this like uh, there were more <laughs> levels that I haven't ran than I have or at least in terms right. of like some submissions yeah like um but uh I have had some decent times on some of the levels uh. There have been some levels that I don't think I don't even I still don't even have Steam friends time because I still haven't even like bothered to like or at least I don't have good Steam friend times because I haven't bothered to like touch like touch them much since the like the friend board came out. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. You're like you're like I have beaten this level to as much as I need to to be able to say play the Prime Sanctums and effectively 100% the game sort of. I'm but not the plan you. is to have a decent submission on every category at some point. Um. I don't know. I don't know when I plan to do that, but I want to like submit some runs to every category because I want to start learning full game at some point. Yeah, I want to run full game. Easy. I I I don't. I haven't seen a whole lot of uh, runs for like gauntlet style levels specifically, but um, it's, I'd be very interested to see like how they're ran, just because like I I don't know, because like the most popular speed runs that I think of are just like the ones that I had mentioned up above, and it's like I know where I know exactly what people do to do this like functionally and mechanically i know what they're doing but like i don't know how people are speed run five three properly because i don't see anybody do it so uh, I, i'll be very much interested to see what you what you end up coming out with um i I'm yeah but i know like to you but <laughs> i could definitely run levels that are pretty much just enemy gauntlets i mean obviously you could look at my p2 or my four two you know what i mean so yeah uh some stuff I have unsubmitted for seven four as well. Um, you played violence, right? Yes. What do you think of violence? Uh, I I think it's a thematically very appropriate area. Like I think the way that the whole thing is structured is very much like um. I don't know. It it almost looks like it's trying to subdue. Like the first le- the first level is like trying to pretend like it's subduing. Uh, <clears throat> violence as like a sin in a weird way. like it, it, it's subduing everything that would be going on down in there or how people would get punished down in there and then as you play more of the layer you're like oh look at these bloody mannequins and then you're like oh let me go to 7-2 and you're like okay there's an actual war zone going on and there's war giraffes in the back and then you move to 7-3 and you're like oh these people have you know done not so nice things to themselves uh, and also the war giraffe is right fucking there is he gonna kill me and then you're like oh okay there he is I'm gonna go kill him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I think I think it's sick. Um, I'll I'll still have to play the play it more to notice little intricacies of it. Um, but I think I think it's it's a very good start to Act Three. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna be focusing a lot on Seven Four over the like next month or so. Um, I really want to get a good time or a much better time. I think I mentioned Stu on earlier, but Stu on's already like I had the record for Seven Four for a bit. And that didn't last for very long. And Stuan cooked some stuff. And I think Stuan is ahead of me by like almost 30 seconds at this point. Oh my now. goodness. Yeah, so I need to I need to sharpen up, you know what I mean? It, but it's Stuan. <laughs> Shout out to Stuan, by the way. The guy's a goat. Yeah, it's like he's, he's like the goat. He's like, I'm I'm down th- or he's like I he's like I'm 30 seconds behind on Stuan, but to be fair, it is Stuan, the goat himself. <laughs> yeah. So, like, makes sense. Like if you if, like if you wanted me, okay. So if you ever asked, who do I think is probably the uh, best ultra kill player ever? Uh, it's probably Stuan. Like I think Stuan is most likely the answer. Yeah, I believe it. It makes so, sense. So you know, <laughs> yeah, Stuan is just uh, unbelievable. How crazy that guy is. <laughs> you know, so you know if he beats me in a level, you know what I mean. It's two on, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, it's like a it's it's his rite of passage. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <clears throat> but 
but um i also had like one or two questions specifically pertaining to the runs themselves uh that i had mentioned p1 p2 six two and four four just because there's like there's some things that that um i there's some things i don't understand and then there are things that i do understand but i wouldn't understand from like a technical perspective so uh like for example the p1 speed run i watched it and i just saw you clip through the the death barrier and the torch key door um and i can see that it was probably due to some weird hitbox manipulation with um like pausing the game what were you what was what were you doing there <laughs> So if you're talking about like the, the torch or whatever, so basically yeah. uh, in P1, uh, depending on which category that you're running, we have something called the oob and then we have the poob. There's the oob, which just stands for out of bounds and, and poob is P percent out of bounds. Right. Makes and, sense. Uh, uh, so in, in both of them, basically, uh, you know how when you're flying or just like falling over there towards like the mouth or whatever, that there's like this little mouth after you pick up the torch. Yeah. I and mean, then you can fall through it, and then that's where the pedestal is on the ground somewhere, and you place the torch, right? Yeah. Uh, if you actually, fl if you're like, if you like, if you are flying in, if you do like the thing that I do, where I do like a dive at the entrance door, and I bonk my head, and it's gonna be flying over where towards the uh, P1 arena. If you fly far enough past like that mouth that you're supposed to go through, you can actually just like mi miss like a uh, like a like a death plane, and you can fly right past it directly to the checkpoint. And you just hit the checkpoint somewhere in the void. And so the reason why I'm like spamming pause is because I'm like trying to hit the checkpoint by pausing so I can checkpoint manually. Um, oh, right. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. But for P percent, um, you, you can't actually checkpoint. So we actually, there's this like, we call it the poob because the, the poob is really, it's an awful strat. It's really hard to do. <laughs> you basically, you do basically you do the same exact thing that I told you that we do but instead of like trying to hit the checkpoint you want to hope that you like um like you want to hit a really weird angle so the arena actually like loads in because normally if you're just doing any percent you don't actually have to force the arena to load in you can just checkpoint manually and then it'll then it will load in yeah but um in p percent you have to have the arena load in without manually checkpointing otherwise it wouldn't be a uh um, a P rank, and it's really weird to do. And you also have to fit through like this little itty bitty hole perfectly after flying from like really far away. You know, so it's yeah. it's really really precise, <laughs> and it's really awful to do in P percent. And that's probably that's most of the reason why people don't grind down and uh, P percent for P one as much, or at least for, uh, for world record like tier runs. You know what I mean? Because that strat, people just hate it. It's uh, it's pretty rough. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it sounds like it, it, it's for, already an obnoxious thing to have to do, but then to have to do it from, like, miles away and also basically entirely in the dark. I, like, if I saw something... Entirely in the dark, and you pray that you hit the loading zone so the arena loads in. Yeah, if not, That's then you restart for the just reset. millionth time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's that's significantly less complicated than I thought it was. It's literally just like... Here's the door, here's the death plane, but the death plane doesn't extend as far as you think it does. So now here we are, and yeah. now we're on the ground. Because, <laughs> yeah, if you don't fly far enough past that mouth that I was talking about, then it'll you'll take a little damage, and then it'll, like, teleport you back up to, like, the, uh, to the, the platform. Yeah. But if you, if you fly just far enough past it, it won't teleport you anywhere, and you can just hit, you can go, you can fly straight to the checkpoint. You know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that's, all right. Good to know. I think it's, uh, the point at which I realized that the game has really weird loading zones or like loading boxes or figuring out where it, the game should put you after you have clipped out of bounds was actually when I was playing seven, two and trying to beat the challenge <laughs> The like the secret yeah. challenge. Um, cause I know that there's like an intended way of like, well, I I've beaten the challenge and I know that there's an intended way of getting that red skull without hurt it, without damaging any enemies. It was dumb that I found it out the way that I did. Uh, and I felt like I had been betrayed, but what I found out is that right by the door where you put the skull, you can just straight up slam storage up into the ceiling and you'll just be up top because they didn't put any collision there. And then uh, if you like fall in one specific spot, you will clip up to the top where the, the four yellow hook points are in the corner of the room. And if you don't step in the right spot, then you just get teleported back to the to the tram car. And I was like, I don't know how oh. the game is determining where I need to be and where I need to be teleported to. Um, but I imagine that those kinds of little tricks, if you do understand how they work, then that's how the P1 speedrun can be 
more intuitive to understand whereas i was just watching it and i was like yeah sometimes it has like sometimes the game has like like it sort of has like return points for like if it like because um you know when you like go out of bounds it'll try to 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 return you to like the most uh, con- like i don't know not, not, it might not necessarily be convenient place but like the most reasonable place or something yeah i would naturally assume it's probably like this is the last point you stepped on the ground therefore or like yeah it's like this is the point where you last stepped on the ground maybe this is even like for where example, you're supposed to spawn when you get a checkpoint therefore an example you. Uh, a really simple example of that would be like so uh in three two p percent uh, one of the easy ways, you know, there's how uh, you were watching me play three two earlier. One of the easy ways of um, like doing a paper state run is uh, you get to that door and you like slam to like clip out or whatever, and then you can like ultra boost yourself all the way to checkpoint. But instead of just hit, like pressing escape when you hit the checkpoint, you hit that you hit the checkpoint and you slam down, and then it will return you right up to about where Gabe is, basically. <laughs> yeah. Rather, yeah, and so because the game has detected that you've hit like a like a like a some sort of saving zone or whatever. You know what I mean? So you don't actually have to manually checkpoint, and that counts as a p percent strat to get back inbounds, basically. Yeah, even if you take more damage, it's like you made it. Yeah, you didn't have to restart. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's uh, yeah. I'm sure there are again. I'm sure I, I I have no doubt that there are people who on a technical level understand more about that kind of thing. I know for speedrunners, it's like, I need to land here and I will be where I need to be. And they may not necessarily know why, because it doesn't matter to them. <laughs> but uh, the, let me see. All right. So, th- so this is a thing that somebody brought up to me once. I think it was, it might've been during one of Kirby's uh, speedrun streams, probably trying to get Leviathan or something. Um, and, and somebody had specifically mentioned the, um, the fact that, uh, speedrunners will play on the hardest difficulty because the enemies will spawn and, and run to you faster so you can kill them faster. <laughs> but I noticed in the 6-2 speedrun, you were playing on the easiest difficulty because you were able to blow yourself up twice while still having 100 health when you got into the arena. Um, so I didn't know if you if you knew, like, what are other additional speedrun benefits of either playing on, like, an easier difficulty or a harder difficulty that aren't just you have more health on the easiest difficulty and the enemies are faster and run at you faster on harder difficulties. It's that's typical. Okay, so for ninety nine percent of the uh, how it works, for so for it's enemies for levels that are just boss levels or like people typically play on harmless. Um, it helps out just being able to like like set up like a some sort of boss setup. But for and for yeah for at levels with combat, uh, that is why people play on violent because you know p- the enemies. As far as the speedrunner concerned, they are running to their death faster. Yeah. You can parry quicker. You know all that stuff. You yeah. know what I mean? And they didn't do the traditional thing where harder difficulty means more health. It just means faster attacks. But there are also some speed. sort of like uh, I think there's a few other situations where homeless could potentially benefit you. Um, but like uh, we were talking about this. Um, but for for p two p two any percent is one of the weird ones. I think SVXC was the one. Is a, is a runner who was initially I don't know if you've seen P two any percent, but it's got this weird strat where you like um where you tell get a mind flare and you you make it follow you all the way to the arena so you can kill the boss. And they were talking about how potentially depending on the difficulty, the mind flare has like varying like speeds of like how it cycles through stuff or how it does its like attack cycles. And uh, we were talking about this, but depending on uh, they, this we actually was looking at it, but depending on how uh, the cycles interacted, or with more experimentation, uh, it's possible that like a difficulty like like lenient or something could be like the meta for a level or once. Huh. Interesting. I guess. But that- I don't know. I don't think SVX ever did enough like research into the uh, into how that could potentially be useful. But um, but for the most part, pretty much every level is like either harmless or violent. Yeah, and well, no in betweens. Yeah, and primarily for those two reasons, and also depending on the primary, like harmless gives you the extra health. That's like the main reason. Um, and like for example, in six two, where I charge up the UB, um, I take that fifty damage to do the UB usually. That's like um, uh, that's the reason why I play on harmless there. Otherwise, the strat would be entirely exactly the same. Yeah, it, I think. Hold on, you were talking about that that earlier. How uh. Uh, what were you saying about the ultra kill community needs some what were you saying again um 
Uh, you made a video talking about oh, the state of Ultra Kill's community or something. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. What did you say in that video again? Uh, if you don't mind? Oh. I forgot. Or just a brief description. Do you, like, like in terms of specifically how it correlates with what we're talking about here? <laughs> or... <laughs> Well, no, I was going to mention it because there is like a problem with like, there's like people, there is so many people on like whatever platform, YouTube, TikTok, that comment on Ultra Kill Run, be like, oh, harmless. And it, it's, it's such, a, such a big issue. And people just, people like, uh, we, there's a reason why it's runners run on those, on these like difficulties, you know. And there's so many people who will just be like, oh, harmless and immediately like, like try to d diminish someone's like achievement. You know what I mean? But they don't understand why the unit, why the speed runner is using this difficulty to begin with. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. I, for the yeah. most part, like every every run that, that uses the full advantages of harmless would only be like a fraction slower on, on violence. You know yeah, what I mean? Because those people are usually good enough to be able to like execute the entire strategy. Where, oh yeah. Where it's like it's a, just very small things. Yeah. That you know. Yeah, because I, I guess the the whole a part of that video, and granted, it was it wasn't like a super crazy negative thing that I touched on because the. The main negative thing that I touched on in that video was people backseating too much and being annoying as shit. There's a lot of people who have a really bad view of the of not. I don't think it's a lot. I, objectively, there are people who haven't played. The, there are more people who haven't played Ultra Kill who have a better view of the community than ones who have a bad view of it. Oh yeah. Um, but the ones that have a bad view on it, there's like a couple main things that they really, really dislike. One is that um, people will do what you're talking about, where they're like. Somehow people have equated have there are some people who have equated Ultra Kill to being fun and being at its best and only runs being impressive because it's difficult. So like um <laughs> when I posted my my P two P rank, I just posted it because I was like I was like, Oh, I did it. I just I was like, I did it. It was actually my second run because my dumbass forgot to record the first one because I just wanted to have it in the archive, but I was like, fuck it. I went and did a second one um like a week later. And a guy came into my comments and he was like, do this on violent or it's irrelevant. And I'm pretty sure he was joking, but I kind of, uh, used, I kind of used what he said as a point where like, um, so this is a long tangent. So there was a point I was trying to make that people, um, most of the time will look at a speed run and if they like to try and play the game fast and if they see a speed run, especially amongst their friends, they will see it as a non-confrontational challenge and, a, and they're like, how can I beat this? And then you kind of go back and forth with your friends trying to beat each other's times and it's a good time. But I could understand how from an outsider's perspective, that looks like people who are being toxically competitive because there is an issue where people will look at what you do. And if it's not the most difficult or if it's not the most technically precise and if it's not world record, some people are going to be like, you suck and I hate you and you need to kill yourself. Oh, <laughs> people are people are so much literally so people who say awful shit. And it's, it's, it's even worse when people are like say stuff when they don't even know why. Or like they're not educated about it, you know what I mean? Yeah. There was some guy that commented on one of my Nomo runs, <laughs> and if you know what Nomo is, like yeah, it's no monsters. It's it's supposed to be like the level, but only movement. It's one of the official categories, the third official ca category of every IL. You have any percent, p percent Nomo. I think it was like P1 Nomo I did, and I did a run, and then some guy was like, you know, I'll subscribe if you actually kill the boss. <laughs> <laughs> You're like. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like, I just, it uh, <laughs> doesn't even know what the category is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, no, uh, like could you imagine if it was a special on one of those ones that you hold all three records for? They're like, I'm only subscribing if you do it this. It was. Like, yeah, it was P1. <laughs> it's like, motherfucker, go look at my other things. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Bro doesn't know. I also have every world record for P1. Yeah. Like, homie all does of them. not know who They're he's talking to. They're all mine. Oh Christ! Yeah, that's yeah that that's always going to be a, a, a semi big issue where you're always going to have people who like yeah. it's not really a Dunning Kruger effect, but they have this really weird thing where they're like, "You, why are you doing this? This is not be like because people almost take it offensively if you don't like play the game the way that they do, and it's like, how come you're playing it like this? I would only upload my P rank speed runs if it was on the hardest difficulty, and it's like, all right, well you don't have world record, so shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, exactly yeah that's like that's like a weird thing that occurs um but yeah either way there's some people are just uh i don't know it's just i try to let it bother me too much and it usually doesn't but there are some people who will like like we don't even understand what, how 
little it matters that I so for example there was there's some people like I posted like my P1 any percent record or whatever and P1 any percent does not change uh, to the difficulty at all the only reason why I run P1 on harmless nowadays is um uh it was for the poob it makes it uh having the quicker dash refills I don't know if you noticed but on harmless uh, your dash is actually also re recharged faster, faster. yeah yeah, that actually helps out a little bit when it comes to doing the P percent entrance, assuming when I do actually get it in P1. But other than that, there is no difference. And then people who are like, oh, if only you could imagine, oh, if only you would have done it on Harmless. Oh, yeah, so it would have looked exactly the same. <laughs> yeah, you like it. You know what I mean? Come on. Yeah. The boss dies in 400 milliseconds either on either difficulty. Yeah, you're like, I timed this shit. Uh you know, like it's just like a. There's also probably people who are gonna who are gonna look at it and they're just gonna say that, like they're gonna say that out of ignorance, because like when I was looking at your six two speed run, I watched it and I was like, damn, he killed Gabriel fast, and then I that was it. And yeah. then when I was structuring these questions, I then had to go back and rewatch it because I was like, I was like, wait, hold on, hold on, something's not right here. What do you mean he exploded twice and and still had a hundred health? Did he like, did he do the sneakiest checkpoint known to man? I was like, no, that doesn't make sense because this is P percent. I looked at the thing, I was like, oh. He started the level 200 health. He's on hard. You could play on um <laughs> violent and do the exact same thing, but you'd have to do the um the 35 damage UB. Yeah. Which is a little bit it's a little bit less consistent because you got to make sure you do the UB slightly closer. But other than that, there is no difference between the boss kills at all. Yeah, exactly. I, I, perfectly identical. Yeah, so it's like um, you take that and like I was coming at it from a perspective of like, oh, what the hell? There's clearly a piece that I missed here. And then there are malicious people who are like you suck at this game because you didn't beat it on the hardest difficulty. And also, because I'm a boss runner, I think I, I run into that like issue a lot more than other people. Because a lot of the boss levels are optimal on Harmless. And it's just that there are so many people who are just... I don't know. It's, it's like I feel like it almost feels like they're just dying to like like to discredit my accomplishments or something. You know what I mean? It's like, come on. Yeah. I wish people would just actually know why we do these things. And, you know, the board also has no requirements on difficulty, like the official speedrun board. You can, you can run a level on whatever difficulty you want. It does not matter. Yeah, because ultimately it's like... It, I it, it, it probably is just because of the way that, that Ultra Kill has specifically done there. Like, if, if, if increasing difficulty actually increased, like, enemy health bars, then I could understand why people would be, like, saying something about it. But the fact that it doesn't, it's like... It's like every it's like the the core of what I did would have been the same. Like you said, because Gabriel for example, still dies in 400 milliseconds no matter the the difficulty. <laughs> and when you're fighting Minos Prime or when when you're setting up the boss kill for Minos, uh for me if I'm doing it, when I'm playing on Violent or on Harmless, so on Harmless you want you know what happens? I punch him and I shoot the coin and he dies. He never even attacked. <laughs> yeah. The exact same thing happens on Violent. There is no difference. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, the same amount of health. There is virtually, like, you know what I mean? There's no difference at all. Yeah, the only thing is you get a little bit more, mobi more, more mobility because of your dashes. <laughs> Cooldowns. Yeah, and that's not even, I don't even take advantage of that unless I get a good lineup for the P percent, like, uh, entrance. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like, oh, I, th I think I'm about to hit the uh, P percent entrance, so I should spam my dashes. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Um, but either way, yeah, it's good to hear that it doesn't really it's good. It's good to hear that it doesn't happen very frequently. And then whenever it does, it's one of those things you make, like maybe like one little snarky remark and then you move on with your day. <laughs> You're like, it's fine. Yeah. So bless. Um, I, I like watching. Uh, I know you're talking about backseating or whatever, but um, earlier, but I, I like watching a lot of like ultra kill streamers it's on Twitch. I kind of like browse around the category. Yeah. And fine. I've also seen people like backseating there as well. Um, I, I try. I try to offer people help sometimes uh, if they like want it. Exactly. But I don't like the. Idea, I like the idea of offering help from the uh, perspective that is coming from a uh, a like a you know like multiple multiple time world record hold, record world record holding guy and not just some random guy backseating you. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like um, you know. Yeah, especially Some people were like find it very interesting to like know that oh hey i'm being helped by a guy that's like actually knows what he's doing you know what i mean yeah this guy's world records this guy's a speedrun verifier you know what i mean yeah and i'm sure i'm sure from uh from like i i can't speak to the way that you try and provide help to people when they're doing stuff 
but if I had to take a, a gander, I'm going to naturally because one thing that I, I also notice is that typically if people try and backseat somebody in like a in a run or something, they kind of just strictly tell them exactly what to do. Whereas the type of kind of help that I like to provide people is like, um, hey, here is a mechanic that you probably wouldn't be aware of. And not a mechanic like this is how you punch your shotgun bullets, but something that's oh, yeah. like, something that's like um I try to do like little small things like help people, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like um yeah, you know, little core pieces that help them throughout the entire game rather than like, yeah. here's how you defeat the hideous mass. For example, I think I've seen a few people like a hey, uh playing um P1. I was just like, you know, uh you just, just try playing things I was on the ground. See that helps. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, like, see if it makes your life easier. But, but yeah, I, I try not to be, you know, when I, whenever I do give help to people that I see on streams and stuff, I try to be respectful about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because some people will be like, oh, you're so bad. Why don't you just punch your shotgun bullets already? That's just like fucked up. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, my my buddy hit a hundred followers on Twitch, and he and he he played um through. What did he What did he get to? He got all the way to. He got all the way to layer three. So he 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 had beaten the corpse of King Minos, uh, but when he got to the hideous mass in in one three, he it was it was difficult for him to beat him because obviously it's a little bit tough when you don't really know like how to do a lot of movement and how like to shotgun swap and things, and also he has a lot of ceramic plating. And there was a guy who was talking to him uh, and he was like, and he was trying to tell him to grab the soap. And we were like, no, just like let him play the game legit. Like let him just try and beat the boss as, as like normal. Uh, and, and he was like in the, in the, the Twitch chatter was like, well, if it's not legit, then Hikita wouldn't have put it into the game. I was like, that's not the point. It's like, he's never going to learn how to fight the hideous mass. If he just goes and grabs the soap and, soap and kills it. And so, um, yeah. Anytime I watch, like especially when my friend gets gets back to streaming Ultra Kill again, um, I I like want to be there the whole time to um to make it clear to people to not backseat and then give them swift punishment if they don't, because I recognize how um how annoying it can be to be backseated when you play the game, and then I also know how disappointing it can be if you. If after playing the game for a while, you realize that like uh, you didn't get to experience a lot of the stuff yourself because it was just told to you on how to do it. So that's why I'm really I'm like a super hard O on that now where I'm like, motherfucker, he may catch you backseating and you're getting this the a swift backhand. So, but either way, yeah, enough, <laughs> enough about them. They don't matter. <laughs> enough about the backseaters. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, oh, I just punched my mic. Um, I'm I, I'm gonna skip over this one because I don't care about it as much anymore. Um, I don't know if this is still a tech that's in the game, but when I was watching your four four speed run, I noticed that if you kept switching back and forth on and off of the overheat nail gun, you could just keep doing the overheat charge. Um, oh yeah, that does that still. That's just okay. So that is still a thing. Okay. Yeah, shooting with the like the blue variant charges the green variant more. Oh. I did. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. So that's kind of like an intentional mechanic. It's probably just not. Um, it's not typically used in such a it's, it, to swap like it's, that. It's one of the things that I just think is like, oh, now it's a feature. Yeah. 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 Um. Okay. So I, one I, of the things I want to. Yeah. Sorry. One of the things I want to mention real quick is like, if you go look in the game right now, Christmas hats on everything. <laughs> you dude, I love it. I think that yeah. The, it's kind of impressive the amount of stuff they put Christmas hats on. I think they put like they put a Christmas hat on the scorpion tail of the the hideous mass. They put a hat on. There's one on uh, the Panopticon. Yeah, there's a yeah there's a hat on the Panopticon. There's a hat on the um on the human bo on the body that's inside of the um the coffin on the back of a gutterman when you kill it. <laughs> um, yeah. What else is there hats on? There, I think there's hats on the uh, on the blood creatures as well right now in layer seven, in like the. Oh yeah, Those little husks. The blood creatures are pretty cool. Yeah, I like them. They're nice. I'm pretty sure they're just. I, I think we, me and my friend, figured out that they are just the alpha. You husks know, that they've had retextured. So also one of the things that I've liked 
Um, I wanted to actually talk about uh, Ultra Kill for a second. One of you know one of the things that I actually just don't freed up like they almost never play. Cyber grind. Oh really? Yeah. Um, I don't know when I when I this kind of goes back to Doom, but when I fell in love with like Doom and like I really liked like the the linear level of progression. I just loved playing the levels. I stayed away from like Doom's like horde mode and stuff like that and. And uh, and the same is actually kind of the same for Ultra Kill, where I just I love I love just getting better at the the linear levels. Basically, um, I'm not really a big fan of the cyber grind. I just I don't know. Every time I try I playing the cyber grind, while it is fun, I just find myself wanting to go back and run a different other level some more. You know what I mean? I'm like, damn, I should be running like this instead or whatever. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. And so I end up yeah. not spending a whole lot of time in cyber grind like at all. Yeah, that's actually, that's very fair. I'm kind of the opposite right now, actually, where I don't play a lot of, um, I don't play a lot of the regular levels because I'm like, uh, there are certainly like ways that I could try and be faster, but I don't know, just probably just because of where I'm at right now. I'm like, it's like focusing on layer seven to just try and beat the levels and understand what I'm doing. But I play a lot of the cyber grind primarily because, um, it helps me come up with really stupid and not effective ways to kill people. Like the reason I play cyber grind is almost the exact antithesis of, um of speed running where i'm like i'm like okay so i had this funny idea where i launched a coin into the stratosphere and then i coin punched into an enemy and then tried throwing out another coin to see if the if uh to see if rail coining via that method would chain to the coin i just threw to the enemy to the coin in you know the solar system and then back down onto him <laughs> just because i thought it'd be funny <laughs> but I understand that, like, from your perspective, you're like, you're like, I'm trying to get these PBs, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, but Cyber Grand can be fun. Like, I'm actually just checking out for a little bit right now. I guess to pass the time, you know, yeah. keep my mind busy, ADHD moment. But um, I find myself longing to. To do, to play one of the levels every time I play Cyber Grand. <laughs> like, I should be running this instead. Yeah, I also like time, especially P two. I really, I really like. I'm like, I should be playing P two. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, man, I want to try and like P rank P two, but I get so frustrated after the 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 first mind flayer room for some reason. I think it's just because I I just I play in a weird way and I play like really aggressively, but not in a way that keeps me alive. And then I die. And then <laughs> have you P ranked P two since it like released? Uh, yeah, I P ranked it on normal. I've been working to P rank it on violent. Um. I, I almost got it the other day, actually. I, I literally was like, Sisyphus had like a singular uh, feedbacker's melee worth of health. And I'm not exaggerating to you when I say I missed everything on him. I missed my coins to just try and target him. I missed the shot on my revolver. I missed my rail cannon. I missed my shotgun pellets. I missed my punch. He killed me. And and I, I, <laughs> I was like, okay. I hate myself. <laughs> but... Maybe I can keep that momentum and do it again. Could not do it again. Yeah. But, but you'll eventually get it. Yeah. It's like, uh, while speed running, one of the things I will say while speed running is that, um, uh, I don't know, it depends on how, like, it will be really passionate about some of these levels. I've P ranked P2 so many times. And like in the pursuit of like the best possible time, yeah. you know what I mean. And that's cool. And for some people, like imagine that could be like just too much, exhausting. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh yay! Imagine like, uh, imagine be cool. You'll, you'll think it's cool when you P rank P two on violent or whatever for the first time. But after like the I don't know five hundredth time, the weight isn't really there anymore. You know what I mean, it kind of yeah. goes away a little bit. Yeah, the weight isn't there for it's you. Really... The weight is definitely there for some for other people though. Because I'm like, yeah, oh, wow, it's like um... P ranks. <laughs> You get a gold star. <laughs> it is when you start really like going at a level. Um, like you gotta keep in mind that like, I don't know, just casually playing the level it might lose its value a little bit. You know what I mean? If you yeah. once you like just drain everything out of it, besides just um, literal world record like tier runs. Because that's uh, every because like for me, I'm like every time I get like a like a like a if it's like if it's not PB. I'm like, ah, oh, this run sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I know it doesn't actually suck. It's a good, they're usually good runs, very good runs still. But like, uh, it's just like, oh, I gotta have, it's like all or nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's exactly. not the, it's not, it's not the sub three that I don't want it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Well, yeah, which is that's that's totally fair. Luckily, I haven't hit that exhaustive point yet because I haven't P ranked P two yet. But uh, even for some of the levels that I have, it's always one of those things where it's like I I, I like finding. Um, God, there's not really a good way for me to explain this other than like I I like finding kind of more pedestrian ways to be faster at the game, which is like not utilizing any of these super batshit insane strategies, but just like. Uh, how can I mechanically like how can I swap my weapons faster how can I like how can I set myself up so that when I swap to this weapon I don't have to then swap to its other variant to do damage like little things like that where like um, an optimization within the whole run itself rather than like this is a tech that I found out that absolutely just shaves off a bunch of time because learning that tech might be a headache but I'm like oh how can I how can I kill the panopticon faster than I did last time without you know without doing 30 or i guess like uh, like how can i kill minnows prime faster without doing a whole 45 seconds worth of setup to to one shot him kind of deal <laughs> so yeah and that's also that that's also partially probably one of the reasons why i'm doing a lot of the cyber grind stuff is because it's like it's like i'm not going to burn myself out on trying to speed run or like be faster at these levels because i don't even really feel like playing them right now um so it's like but when i do go to play them i'm like okay let me try and get my bearings back as to how I even play the level, and then let me figure out faster ways to do things. I guess if I wanted to do cyber grind a bit more, I could speed run it. There's um, there actually we do actually have a couple speed run categories for cyber grind. What? I think we have like t- yeah, there's like uh, there's waves ten to thirty, and I think there's twenty five to fifty, and there's like uh, I think it's like one oh zero to twenty five or or zero to something like that. Yeah, but I think there's like three to categories for cyber grind. Oh, I didn't know that they actually had speedrunner categories for that. I guess it would make sense because you can still. It's not like you know there, there are always faster ways. To it's really funny because after you get like generations. after you get to like wave twenty five, there's like you just have to like either die as quickly as possible or jump off the ledge as quickly as possible, and that's how you get the end the run. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Like, oh, I run. got the wave twenty five. I because you, you the, the run ends and then they use the uh the end screen timer. Yeah, so the so more time you're spending doing nothing, it's like that. Your, in- you're your, your, your incentive is to to get to like wave twenty five or whatever it is, and then just jump into the abyss and then <laughs> have the time pop up on the screen. That's funny. It's like yes, let's go. I got my fucking world record for zero to twenty five. Fucking plummets to the to the t- into space. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. That's yeah. I'll probably have to look at that actually because I I. Well, I should have expected that there's speedrun categories for. There's probably a fucking speedruns for the credits, and I don't even know how that would be possible. Uh, but I didn't. Even, uh, I didn't even yes, actually. Applications. So the, okay, there's waves one to twenty five, ten to thirty, and then twenty five to fifty. Huh. Nice. Yeah, I'll have to go look at that because yeah, I I just, I just straight up didn't know that existed on the website. Uh, but yeah. Uh, what else is um. You were talking about the credit speed run. How speed running the credits themselves isn't a thing. However, there's there is a game mode in the credits. It's rocket a rocket race. Oh yeah, I forgot there's about a time that. Time for that. That that has a speed run category. <laughs> I like that. It's rocket race. Yeah, I it rocket yeah, race world record is a sub thirty. Let's see, some guy has a twenty nine point uh <laughs> twenty nine point nine six two. That that that's just a whole testament to everything is the fact that they're like one the fact that they even made the credits playable but then it's like guys what's your what's your uh, what's your <laughs> what's your rocket ride percent in the credits and they're like what <laughs> oh goodness let me let me get back on schedule here uh, how are your general layer of seven speedruns going right now like just how's how's the whole experience uh, of doing them going pretty solid. I enjoyed my first playthrough. I actually I P ranked seven three like first attempt. I didn't even know I did. It was because by accident. <laughs> oh, that, that's impressive. But uh, for seven four, um, that's the one that I've have been sort of focused on right now. Yeah, my runs are pretty been pretty good. Yeah, because I, uh, I only played seven four once. I don't even I I'm like struggling to remember the layout of it. But I it'd be interesting to see how that whole um. And see how that whole thing works because I've seen like it, obviously these aren't P rank speedruns, but I've seen people like killing the boss in 26 seconds where 20 of those seconds are just them flying up to its head or something. Oh, yeah, that's the any percent. It's like really, uh, it's really awful. 
Yeah, the the eighty percent strat for seven four right now is literally just like blow yourself up all the way to where its head is. Some bug happens that makes it the boss like kill itself, and then you like just just you launch yourself all the way to the exit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I didn't actually know that was a bug, uh, but I guess because every time I see the speedrun, it literally just looks like they like dash and like headbutt the boss, and then it just dies. And I didn't realize that it's just something to to do to do with its probably fucked up coding. But uh, I ran through seven three, uh, and I was really. I was like, I'm just exploring this map and I'm just seeing what's around. And like, I slammed swords to the top of the map. And so I was like, I can see every secret up here. And so I tried venturing to figure out how to find them. And by the time I beat the level, it was like 28 minutes. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, I was here for a while. <laughs> um, but yeah, hold on. Let me pull up the. Oh, actually, I want to pull up the record for. Um, uh, I think it's Worms Run. I don't know. Worm, where is it? The. The seven four shit is so stupid. <laughs> His fucking thumbnail. I love ultra kill speedrun thumbnails because they're just shit. You give the boss a lobotomy. Yeah, I'm watching. Okay, yeah. So let's see. So you slam storages. Uh, fucking super nukes him up to the fucking skybox. It's like hello, Earth Mover. Basically, nice from my understanding, the reason I don't know exactly why it happens, but my reason, what I know is basically you go up there. And then that boss arena spawns, but you know how it spawns like you know how there's like the the beams that are supposed to be like hazards. Yeah, it's hazards. For too. some reason, like its own head gets stuck in the beams that it spawns, and so it just <laughs> sort of kills itself. No, um, that is so fucked up. I'm gonna give this video a like. <laughs> I'm even gonna leave a comment that I'm just gonna call it a personalized lobotomy. That is so stupid. Oh. Uh. But re yeah, regardless, that's that's I don't know that that's interesting to know that that's actually why that happens. Um, but, you know, I'd be like. No, I don't know. I don't get it. There are some I, every time I watch a, an ultra kill speeder on, I'm like, this is pissing me off. And Kirby's like, why? I'm like, because I don't know what's going on here, but I feel like I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, like uh, I watched the five four uh, P percent and I was like, OK. Uh, ultra boost himself to the surface. Okay, he's throwing coins at the ground. Or I was like, he's I was like, he's punching a coin, he's launching the coin up, he's flying, he's launch. Oh, and then he, you know, did the. Slap oh, I already have an idea for. Uh, I already know sort of like what the environment will most likely be like in P three. Oh really? It's gonna probably be ice because treachery. Oh, well, yeah, that, yeah, because treachery is like frozen over in like Dante's Inferno or whatever. Yeah. So my bet, I'm pretty confident. I'm looking. I'm looking at runs right now. I just I love uh, violence's aesthetic so much. Yeah, it's really. I can't cool. wait. To, I I have no clue what fraud would be. To be honest, I can't think of what it could be. Uh, but I know that treachery is going to be ice. I mean, it just. I feel like that's too. It's too obvious. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, honestly when i was talking with kirby about this i was like i was like could you imagine if uh if the if the fraudulence layer had the same looking aesthetic as like the fan made fraudulence layer that everybody loves obviously they wouldn't be the same well, that one's like it's, it's like fool's gold is yeah. what that one was right yeah i was like that'd be so hilarious if like if that was the actual decision uh that they just like that was the art decision that they decided to go for for fraudulence and then it's like I, my spelunky is like guys my sort of head canon would be that it would be similar to greed but like, uh, I thought that it could be like, cause you know how greed is like sand. It's like desert and stuff. Oh, I was wondering yeah, if fraud would, theme, yeah. imagine if fraud was like sand again, but it, instead of being like desert theme, it's like, it's like beaches or something like, I don't know. Like, yeah, that could be kind of cool. Yeah. I'm trying to, yeah. I, yeah, actually I see what you're saying. Yeah. It's a little bit difficult to picture. Cause I think the. Obviously, because obviously the whole idea is the fact that like deserts are hot and most of the sand that's in the greed layer um, is either sand will or kill you. Yeah. Or it's like gold. Yeah. It's like gold that has been heated up so hot that any of the greedy sinners who are down there that try to take it will burn themselves to death. And so I'm just wondering what the concept is behind like, all right, you have committed some kind of fraud, be it financial or otherwise. Therefore, this is where you're going and this is how you are being punished. 
And, and I, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I see what you're saying is that it's really hard to like, to maybe, maybe it requires more like context of like what, um, what the punishment for committing in fraudulence in the first place looks like to then determine like, okay, this is the environment that would match it. But the majority of the other ones have been relatively have been kind of self-explanatory yeah. as long as you understand the lore behind Dante's Inferno and all that stuff. And, but we, we have a whole year to speculate, give or take some. <laughs> yeah. There's no way that tre- that treachery isn't going to be ice like frozen over. Yeah. If it's not ice, we riot. Yeah. <laughs> it's gotta be. I mean, that's the only explanation. And like, it's it just, it's literally, if you look at it, like it, it, all interpretations of it that I've ever seen are just frozen over ice. Yeah. You know I mean, See, that'll be exciting to see where we go with that in a year. Um, but uh, we're finally we're finally to the end of all of this. <laughs> um, I, w- I wanted to just hear about what you're kind of I mean, I know you've only been a verifier on this part of the speedrunning website for 10 days now. But um, what does that kind of experience look like for you? Like what what is, what are your tasks and responsibilities, I guess? Uh, just verifying runs. Um, basically, there's a little extension of guidelines we have to go. Um, BGB has provided like a uh, like a like a, a document thing that um, allows us to like we can import times and then we could put how many restarts they had and or how many like like uh, we could put the time that they spent during the restart and it, this document like like auto auto calculates the times for us so, add up the some I've seen actually some runs that still people I I think I talked about it earlier. Some people just like to use auto splitters anyway, but uh, we we time the run using the in game timer, and the auto splitter is usually actually like a little bit off usually by a few oh. milliseconds or whatever. Interesting, because the auto splitter is not we do not consider the auto splitter to be as accurate as the um as just um, the in game timer. The in-game timer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. However, depending on the game, the auto splitter uh. Like if like if you if this is like another game other than Ultra Kill, then they just use the auto splitter. Yeah, because I imagine because <laughs> like most the games timer. most games don't come down to literal millisecond timing differences in whether or not you get above or below somebody. Yeah. So that explains why it's behind a little bit because it doesn't because it's probably not designed for something that's that um precise. Well, again, everybody that I've seen that that uses an auto splitter at Ultra Kill. Um, they usually they use it as like a, a assist tool. It helps them like uh, because like an auto splitter will usually tell you if you're like on good pace or whatever compared to like your PB because they like 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 logs your PBs or something. Yeah, um, and because it, because it obviously it'll is be like oh I'm getting gold splits. Yeah. yeah, 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 like which is fair. Yeah, so I, I respect the fact that they're using them that way, but I can also you're like <laughs> with you're like with all due respect, the game already has. They're not required, which is great. Yeah, thank goodness. But. Yeah. Okay. I guess. I guess I shouldn't have expected much. I. It's. It's pretty obvious that especially when you're dealing with something as fast paced as Ultra Kill, it's like here are the guidelines you need to be looking for, and here are things that you need to vet and make sure that they're correct. Um. And then the moderators are there to make sure that everything everyone is conforming and no foul play is occurring and all that stuff. So. Uh, not a big big surprise, but it's exciting to see you on the page. Um. <laughs> it's like uh, next time we submit a run, we're gonna oh, be like, yeah, right, yeah. who reviewed this. <laughs> I gotta wait for you to submit something. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to figure out what to. Yeah, the last thing that I submitted for was a was a five four record that I got in like twenty minutes after Kirby was trying for like two hours to get it. <laughs> I was like, "What did what? Uh, Kirby get?" Oh, I think I beat Kirby's PB like just on practice the other day. I could believe it. Yeah, I think their their PB right now is like sixteen point. Uh, I don't know four or something. I don't know what it is specifically, but when they were attempting to do it, I kind of just jumped in. And was like, all right, I'm gonna do this because this speed run looks easy. Because to be honest, as a you know, it it is pretty easy in my estimation, honestly. But I did it, and I accidentally got a sub 18, which is what we were looking for at the time. <laughs> and I was like, sorry, my bad. I beat Kirby. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I didn't mean to just you know blow it out <laughs> of the water like that. That was that was a total mistake. You're I like, was just doing it because I thought it'd be funny. <laughs> poor Kirby. Yeah. So yeah. So right now I'm at 55 with a 17.4. And then Kirby is 38 with a 16.7. So if you see this Kirby, you're officially better at better than me at 5.4, but we already knew that. <laughs> but uh, with that, that's officially everything. So I, I, I want to thank you for coming on here and, and, and humoring me. Oh, uh, yeah. About speed running. Is, is there any other? Time. Is there any other last thing you want to know? Like, uh, I don't know. I'm sort of I get I get. 
I uh, how do I describe it? I know we, we can't we kind of rambled about a bunch of random stuff, My and sometimes I don't know. I, <laughs> I I I would I would feel bad if I like I don't know like uh, like um, how do I describe it? Like, I uh, got off a topic a few times. It's just my, I, I always do stuff like that. You know what I mean? Oh, no, no, um, no. I, I think, hold on, here's my philosophy. Uh, depending on the way that people talk with me in DMs before the episode is out, uh, or sorry, before the episode, before we start recording it, I always get a little bit nervous about the way that they're talking because I'm like, oh, I really hope this is like an engaging conversation and that the other person isn't just like, you know, boring as shit or like uh, they they don't talk very much or they're not like they... They don't explain things very well. They don't offer a lot in terms of the stories they're telling. And I've been I've been so grateful that none of it has happened yet. Um, and so that's always the nerve wracking thing. If that I if I've never talked to somebody in person before recording with them on a, on a show, um, I'm always a little bit like skittish about like, oh, I hope this goes well. Uh, but you going off topic a lot proves that that. Like you're like, okay, this is the thing that we're talking about. And I'm not strictly just trying to answer the question and move the fuck on. Like here are some other things that are an extension of that. So anytime we get off topic, as long as it's not like eating into our time and a person's on like a time schedule, I consider that a good thing. Cause I'm like, these conversations are going about as well as they can. Uh, and it, and while it's not always the most natural transition between one point and another point, it's like, um, you know, it was in, it's an entertaining conversation more than it is like a smooth one per se. So you don't need to worry about rambling. Um, I only feel about, oh, about yeah. rambling if I take up some, uh, too much of someone's time. <laughs> I, I was free today. So I was a little tired because, um, I, uh, you know, my stage schedule has been kind of wonky. There's been a lot going on. Actually. I, um, I think, I think I mentioned, uh, I think you said you were 22, but I'm, I'm 21. Um, I actually recently just got my like a couple of days ago. I finally got a driver's license. Let's go. And I was sort of like victory. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. And um, I was like, I don't know. Over the past like week or so, I've been like, uh, you know, like having to like, I had a horrible sleep schedule, so I was like forcing myself to like, you know, make sure I could get up in the morning because that's when I had to go to yeah. do that. So, I don't know. I, I, I had to look over a lot of stuff too. You know what I mean? So like, um, but I got that out of the way <laughs> finally. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's good. That's Wait, good. Too long without having a license, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. My my do my sleep schedule was particularly fucked up today because I was up until five in the morning, mostly because I was just watching somebody edit a video for Kirby. Actually, because I was just like, I was so like enamored with what they were doing when they were editing, um, and then I was like, shit, I have to be up before nine so that I can do a recording for a Dark Souls speedrun one of my friends were doing, and then I was like, hopefully that doesn't take too long because then I have this recording I have to do. And then, uh, <clears throat> yeah, but it's like this has been fun, you know. Yeah, perfect. You, uh, what, what kind of what kind of pictures do you usually put on like your? Uh, do you put like what kind of what kind of image do you usually have? Do you have like a still image for like the podcast or whatever? What do you um, think you're gonna put as like your image? Well, I I didn't I don't upload these to. It's not a video uh, podcast. I don't upload these to YouTube. Um, honestly, I probably could because it's really easy. You put to, them on like SoundCloud or like no, not I, put SoundCloud, on, I put them on Spotify. Spotify. Yeah. Yeah, Spotify. Yeah. yeah, they go there. Um, what I can say is, if I do decide to turn this into a video, and if it does, like, uh, if that's if that's just a cadence change I decide I want to make, uh, it'll honestly probably I don't know what it'll be actually. It'll probably just be like miscellaneous images flashing on screen. It might even just be just straight gameplay with the only breaks being like if I'm mentioning something very specific and I'm like, here's the footage so you can see what I'm talking about, or like you <laughs> you were like uh. <clears throat> You're like Crunks is sending me these. These are the weird ass conversations I have with him, and I just put that up on screen. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have to we'll have to see. But the, right now the plan is nothing because it just goes up on Spotify and it's not a video. <laughs> oh yeah, the the, the Crunk image is really funny though, right? Yeah, I think it's really silly. <laughs> if I could if I could like make a thumbnail for the podcast, I would probably just put it as this. <laughs> that, that, that just that, just <laughs> that exchange. <laughs> that, that exchange right there. Yeah. Fastest and in the wild west, fattest ass. <laughs> Cat taking a selfie. I love it. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that guy, he's great. You know. Yeah, he's cool as hell. But uh. Yeah, he's funny. But yeah, I guess I guess really the, I the only thing is like uh, it's like, who who do you officially want to shout out? We're gonna put him in the description. We're gonna encourage people to go look at him. Oh, we gotta shout out Stu on. This guy has unlimited money. 
You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Greatest ultra kill speedrunner ever. <laughs> Stu on. <laughs> hold up, wait, hold up. Yeah, I, I just I just think it's uh, it funny just to shout out Stu on in particular. Here we go. This guy, this guy is the goat. And look, look at his description. <laughs> Endless winning. What a champion. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Endless winning. Hold on, I think. Hold on, let me get Luridus. Here, here is Luridus's Twitter. This is Luridus is my artist, uh, my profile picture artist, uh, the one who did my commission, or I, you know, I commissioned Luridus. So, but yeah. Oh, I really like this art style. Yeah, Luridus is great. Very talented. Uh, who else would I shout out? Uh, but yeah, I can't really think of anyone else who would have been notable to mention. Um, and a shout out to whoever else I, uh, whoever, whoever's listening to this right now. Yeah, once this is out, I'll probably, um, I don't know, maybe I could like add everybody in my Discord, like, hey, check out this podcast thing. Yeah. West Axel, no way. Yeah, you know? West Axel on a podcast? No way. Yeah, it's always like a, it's always a fun thing to be like a, it's like there's a certain character that you put on when you are doing a stream, and sometimes that character will get broken. When I guess the only last thing I want to, yeah, the only last thing I want to mention is that P1 has been like my shit for so long. That that's where the pipeline, like beware of the pipeline. That's where it began for me. The uh, the is P1 for Ultra Kill. P1 was like a, it was the forbidden fruit. <laughs> that yeah, shit so, uh... like. Uh, <laughs> I'm interpreting now that I've as got, a, I've fallen into a hole. Yeah, so if you want to get into a into ultra kill speedrunning, <laughs> maybe P1 might be the start. If 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 P people, it's P1 or one four, that's what usually happens. You know yeah, actually, I mean? yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, one four is <laughs> uh, me and my friends were fighting for like a sub twenty for a little while, and then like a sub nineteen or something. I don't remember what that was. One four or P1. That's that's the official rankings coming from yeah. some guy you probably only know a little bit about, and then also like top three best ultra kill players. <laughs> Depending on yeah. your qualifications, <laughs> but uh, cool. I will be sure to put these guys. You think in the I'm description. top three? I don't. I, I, yeah, I'm. Yeah, top three from my perspective as a person who doesn't. I don't. Know, you're like you're like the most commercially available speedrunner that I know about, and so like, yeah. and so I'm like, this is going in top three, um right behind Stu on and then right ab above or right behind somebody else that I'm not sure yet. <laughs> yeah, you it's think you're going to get any other ultra kill speed runners on the uh, podcast? Um, I'm not sure. You know what? Here's the thing. <clears throat> let me, let me, this technically should have been a wrap, but it, it, we're not going to make it because this is my damn show. Um, <laughs> what I did is I was like, okay, I want to, I want to revamp the podcast because I went a few months without doing anything. And so I was like, okay, there's a lot of people that I can probably reach out to because I have made a piece of content that um, Ultra Kill content creators that I look up to have seen and have commented on. You technically weren't one of them because you didn't comment on anything. But I was like, you know what? We can make it work because you were referenced in the video. But um, I can give you kind of a list of Ultra Kill homies that I'm looking to talk to at some point. Uh, where is my candidate list? So there were so some of the people who had commented on the video that I made were uh Dumpster Man, Spelunky, aka the creator of the Layer 8, Marzuku, aka probably the most popular Ultra Kill producer on YouTube, uh Mediocrity, uh, and the uh I don't know how to pronounce the dude's name, Goer Don or Goer Cat, the guy who made the spare change percent video. Oh yeah. So at some point or another I I, I have actually bugged all of those except for goer cat um to be like hey get on here so i'm waiting for those to happen but in terms of straight up speedrunners, i don't actually have any so if you have any you want to recommend that you think you'd want to have me talk to uh i i will take any suggestions I recommend Stuan, but Stuan doesn't like to like Stuan's usually a mute if that makes any sense oh uh who would be cool <laughs> uh and i guess this is my definitive i'd recommend search. behead Oh, dude, behead is sick as hell. I'm gonna, I'm gonna type that in here. Oh, that's not how you spell that. <laughs> behead is great. They are like, uh, that's they're the one four person, the one four sweep. So what I am for P one, behead's like that for one four. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So uh, the, 
We are where the po pipeline begins. The two boss levels. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah, the <laughs> that two everybody most plays. The exactly. Two most popular boss levels that everybody and their mom submits to. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, but head, you better be listening to this. I hope I hope you get reached out to. <laughs> Gotta talk about one four on the DJ Cereal Sauce uh, podcast. <laughs> So yeah, we, the, I don't know. We've got a lot of plans. A couple of these have, 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 um, been committed. A couple of these haven't. Um, and so my, you want to, um, yeah. So you want to know what the head is actually working on right now? What are they Sorry, doing? I didn't up, but working on the first sub 10 in one four. It's really close. Wait, the first, wait, huh? In one, wait, 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 what? So sub 10 in one four. Oh, okay. Well, like, I, thought, I thought you said sub one ten, and I was like, I was like, are we talking about the uh, same level here? Like, look, look, look. This is we had to this three days ago. Look, oh it's my, ten point zero five. That's how we're we're fifty milliseconds or fifty one milliseconds away from sub ten in one four. That is absolutely insane. What in the world? What are they doing? What is going on? <laughs> this looks like an action sequence. <laughs> but we're getting close to it. So maybe by the maybe by the time that that you get that you if, that uh you could reach out to the head that the the head might have gotten the sub the sub ten already. Yeah, dude, that's how the I'm nine. I want to see it. I'm gonna be like, <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> yeah. That, oh, that's gonna be insane. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep them on my chopping block. I'm gonna put them in my list, and I will probably reach out to them soon. Yeah, be head if you hear this. Um, I'm coming. <laughs> Unless I already <laughs> came to talk to you once this is released. Um. Oh yeah. But uh. Yeah, cool. I think that's everything. So again, thank you for coming on. This has been an absolute pleasure and an absolute joy. I double checked with Kirby and they didn't have any additional questions. So if they have any later, I'm going to tell them tough shit. You should have gotten faster. Um, and uh, oh, yeah, feel free to ask me to come on here again. I'd love to like have like a second episode or something. Uh, you know, I can talk literally whenever. <laughs> if there's somebody that doesn't shut the hell up. It's me. <laughs> yeah, dude, same. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, dude. Once, uh, once Reaver starts being fully fleshed, we're gonna be like, all right, let's talk Reaver speed runs. So here's the thing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, typically I end these things off with like a little quip. And I don't know if I I can't I can't even think of anything. I'm I'm just too focused on this stupid. Hold on, uh, wait. I got something. Hold on, wait. Oh, I, I guess I can't show it to him. But um, I just I want everybody to know that you just wouldn't get it. It's all that mammoth's fault.